Alrighty, hello there everyone. Welcome back to another virtual painting session. Remember, this is a live painting session and among other things, this will also be a pre-recorded video for everyone to watch after the stream ends. Hello, Jerry Robertson, Ariel uh, G. Mays. How's everyone doing today? So let me go ahead and read out the colors for you and for everyone watching this after the stream ended. So we have quite a few uh, colors here. We have uh, flake white, titanium white. We have gamboge like extra cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red vermilion. This orangey color is a mixture of cadmium yellow, cadmium red. We have Windsor lemon, a lizard and crimson like extra, raw umber. We have ivory black, ultramarine blue, Venetian medium, sap green, and ultramarine blue green shade. So the brands that I'm using include Old Holland, Williamsburg, and Windsor Newton with uh, a Rublev color in there, uh, which is the uh, the medium. So I'm just putting a little bit of Gamsol on the on the brush. I am going to use Gamsol instead of turpentine just because I'm running out of turpentine and I prefer to use that for uh, my classical painting. So I'm just using raw umber to draw and this is uh, by popular request. Hey Bert 2008 469. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining the stream. So uh, the photo reference that you're seeing there of the rooster and again the rooster is by uh, popular demand. Everyone was really into the idea of a painting of a rooster last time. Uh, that is posted in the description box of this video. So uh, if you want to draw or paint along with me, uh, just go to the description box of this video. It also has many other links, such as the links to the materials that I use and links to my online classes. So please check out the description box. Uh, so now I'm just putting in the the platform, the platform or the ground or whatever is about at a slight incline. And I'm going to edit out the bird that's to the right. And we're going to focus on this bird here in the, uh, the leftmost uh, area. And I'm just going to use simple straight lines and angles. This is going to be, of course, in the classical, not the classical, sorry, the uh, alla prima approach. So don't expect anything hyper realistic or super realistic, uh, but rather this is going to be a, a fun one time painting uh, using the alla prima technique, meaning painting wet on wet. So just with a few simple lines, I'm just trying to kind of get a, an idea of the composition. I do want to put the trees in the distant background and uh, you know all of the, the f distant foliage back here. So that's going to be part of the composition there. And again, please feel f free to ask me anything while I am painting. Let's see. Hey, Burke, 2008 for 469 message error. I, I don't know what the, the message error was. Hey, uh, Naima, hello there. Welcome to the live stream. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to just use as many simple straight lines and angles as possible to block in the rooster. And the rooster is kind of the bottom of the rooster's legs are they're kind of cropped. So I'm going to go with the what the photo reference is. Uh, how the photo reference has cropped it. And the drawing is going to be very, very abstract, very simple. And we're going to jump into color really soon with this one. I just want to get the gesture of the rooster. The gesture is more important than the likeness to me. Uh, and remember the gesture is the motion or the overall dynamic, uh, the, the dynamic movement of the, uh, the model. In this case, of course, the rooster. Um, hey, Mina. Hello. Hey, Sky. Do you use uh, water or paint thinner to mix your water mixable paints? These are traditional, uh, but when I do use water, um, 
When I do use the water cleanable oil paints, I use uh, just water to thin it out. Uh, but these are traditional, and I'm using Gamsol. Uh, so that is a petroleum distillate, so odorless mineral spirits. Uh, hey, the someone. Uh, I like your username. That's awesome. The someone. That's cool. Hey, Leslie Hayes. Hello there from Spain. Thank you so much for watching the live stream. Okay, so I think I have the overall gesture of the bird. See this kind of serpentine uh, center line. Uh, we can make a little indication for where the eye is going to go, but all of this is going to be figured out pretty much uh, wet on wet. It's going to look very abstract in the beginning, but that's already pretty much the placement that I want of the bird. The bird is taking out most of the uh, composition a little bit to the left, cropped a little bit to the left like the photo reference. I don't want the bird to the right the little tail that you're seeing from the bird to the right. So I will crop that out and uh, I've already decided how I'm going to edit the background. So there's going to be a little bit of the sky color up here and then some of the distant trees, uh, not too dissimilar to the uh, the painting of the, the, the wolf that we did not too long ago. So that should be good. Now let's get into the uh, the big picture here with the colors. Hey Angela, welcome to the live stream. Um, so, hey, hey Griox, hello there from Croatia. Hey Naldia Garcia. Hey Sky, is Gamsol actually odorless? I use white spirit to thin uh, my paints, but my god, the smell. Um, Gamsol is pretty odorless. Um, I would, it, you'd be hard pressed to kind of find or get any kind of odor from Gamsol. Uh, you know, some of the, I guess, the cheaper odorless mineral spirits tend to have a smell, a slight smell, like if you buy the Mona Lisa brand or something, um, it can have a slight smell. But uh, from my experience now, Gamsol doesn't really have a smell. But remember, it's a petroleum distillate, so even though you can't smell its presence, it's still, um, you know, interacting with the air. So I'm just using cadmium red vermilion and raw umber. Hello there, David Dowden. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining in. Hello there, Ingrid Carlson. Thank you for joining. Hey, G-Maze. So again, feel free to ask me anything. Anything preferably art related. Um, so because the chat is very much an important part of the experience. And a little bit of ivory black. So I'm not going to use any medium just yet. And I'm going to be building everything uh, from the simple abstract to the more complex. And I'm going to be painting relatively thick, so just the paint itself. No medium, just yet. When I use medium, I'll let you know. Uh, let's see. Hey, Ingrid. Um, uh, hey, Tanya. Hey, Shia. Um, let's see. All right, we got a question. Do you like water soluble oils uh, from Ingrid? Um, I don't dislike them, but I it's not my go-to uh, for my uh, you know studio paintings. In general, water water soluble or water mixable is not my go-to, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just that it certain aspects of it are not um, not the best for my type of painting. So. For me, I mainly work in, um, contrary to what you're seeing, I mainly work in the classical approach. It's only the uh, virtual painting sessions that you're seeing here where I actually utilize Alla Prima because of the, you know, the ease and the quickness of it. Um, but I usually will prefer uh, traditional because it dries faster. Uh, that's the main thing. Um, if water mixables would dry at a more reasonable rate, then I would I would like them a little bit more.
But it's not a downside, really. It, it, it really isn't a downside. It just depends on how you use it. So, for instance, for Alloprima, you can use, um, you know, I could easily be using Alloprima here and be fine. And thank you again for that question. So I'm using Winsor Lemon and uh, Ultramarine Blue Green Shade. Both of them are Winsor Newton brands. So let's see. Uh, any more questions? Hey, G Mays, do you ever paint using acrylic? Um, not really. I have taught myself how to use um, acrylic, but no, I haven't used acrylic since really I haven't used it since the last um, tutorial uh, slash uh, you know YouTube video that I made featuring the acrylics um, let's see hey Ingrid what about Alkid oil paint um, that dry fast yeah I do actually I use uh, Alkid um, I use Alkid for uh, mainly for underpaintings and for, for instance, this tone right here, uh, this panel is, uh, this tone that you're seeing is based off of Alkid oil paint. So I use titanium white and um, titanium white Alkid and just raw umber. But of course, the titanium white Alkid expedites the drying process. So um, I used it to paint over an old painting. And that's what I like about um, Alkids again is that fast drying uh, characteristic of it. So I'm creating an educated mess here uh, with the shapes surrounding the rooster. We don't have to worry about atmospheric perspective too much with this one, as the distant trees can be no more than, say, I don't know, like 10 yards away from the rooster. So we don't have to worry too much about um, atmospheric perspective. Instead, we're going to uh, switch our focus into Alloprima techniques uh, necessary to get a realistic painting or, you know, at least impressionistic painting in a short amount of time. So let's see here. Um, hey, Doreen. Uh, wow, didn't know we were having chicken for supper. <laughs> Just kidding. So my vegetarian, vegan, and animal uh, uh, loving friends. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice rooster. It took a while for me to find a decent rooster picture to use for a painting. Now, of course, this is all over the place. Um, I need to bring down the saturation like now. Um, but it, it did take a while to find that this image and I used of course unsplash and the link to the photo is in the description box. So really quickly here I'm going to use raw umber to neutralize the green. I didn't realize it was that saturated. And that's that's a little closer but more raw umber. A little bit of Gamsol to thin out the paint. And um, this one in particular is from, uh, this suggestion is from the last painting session. We had a lot of inquiries towards painting a rooster. So I went on Unsplash and searched for uh, a little bit longer than usual actually. It took me a while to find a decent rooster picture. I didn't realize a decent rooster picture was that hard to find. But I am very picky, though, when it comes to uh, photo references. I will admit, I'm quite picky with photo references. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Ingrid Carlson, what are your favorite oil paints? My favorite are... Um, I have three favorite brands. I have... Uh, my first is uh, Old Holland, then Rublev, then Williamsburg. Those are my three favorite brands. Uh, hey, Chris. Um, okay, let me, I'm trying to catch up with the, the comments. Hey, Chris. How you party? Uh, here's a general question. We mix liquid to thin the paint and 
to glaze. Uh, you can get a similar effect by using mineral spirits. What's the difference? The difference is that the mineral spirits, uh, any solvent, it helps to thin out the paint. But if you're using Gamsol, you have to be a little careful. Uh, it it tends to, uh, petroleum distillates in general, uh, as solvents, tend to kind of eat at the paint. So if you use too much, it's it'll it'll kind of get a little bit ruly and a, a difficult to use, which is why I prefer turpentine. Um, but again, I'm kind of running out of it. Um, I wouldn't suggest using liquid right away to thin out the paint, uh, just because unless you have many layers of paint on your surface already. Uh, if you do use liquid a little too early, it can violate uh, the, the fat over lean. You want to have less medium early on, unless we're talking about an ala prima that you're only going to work on one sitting, like this one. So if I started with uh, liquid with this, it wouldn't be a big deal. This is a painting that will be complete in about three hours or so. The, the entire duration of the stream is the amount of time it will take to take this painting to a completion. Hopefully that answers your question a little bit there. Um, let's see. Hey, Tanya, uh, have you or do you use Gamblin oil paints? What do you think of Gamblin? Gamblin's pretty good. In particular, if you don't have, if you're living in, in an area where you don't have access to flake white, uh, Gamblin's Flake White replacement is my go-to if uh, I don't have access to Flake White. Uh, hey Sky, what do you do with your paintings once you're finished? Do you sell them or keep them? Um, I sell them, well I try to. The ones that I deem sellable uh, I will post on Etsy and sell. The ones that I deem unsellable I paint over like this or if it's a cotton canvas i chop it up and save the stretchers and i tend to chop up more paintings than i save <laughs> so um you know when you've paint, been painting for as many years as, I, as i've been painting you you learn the value of storage space if you know what i mean So let's see, what else have I missed? Um, hey Shia, whenever I paint animals, I try to channel my inner Bob Ross uh, also and lay out a complete wet surface then work the sketch uh, with an angled bright. What do you think of that approach? That's perfectly fine. Um, just just know that if you do lay out a bunch of, um, of oil, I think that Bob Ross's wet on wet technique utilizes uh, a type of oil to help the paint kind of glide a little bit more. Again, um, just make sure that if you do that, uh, as I mentioned before, that it's just a one sitting painting or else you run the risk of violating fat over lean. And if you layer over a painting that has too much oil too soon, that could lead to cracking of the paint film. So I'd be a little cautious with that. All right, let's see, what have I missed? Um, oh, hey, Nora, hello. From Alexandria, Virginia. Wow, I'm not that far away from Alexandria, Virginia. I'm above 45 minutes, I think. Awesome. Uh, hey, Finesse. Uh, uh, hey, bro, can you say hello to uh, Vitali Shunuk? I mispronounced your name, but yep, I can. Hello, Vitali uh, Shunuk. I uh, apologize uh, for my terrible pronunciation, but hello there. Uh, hey, Ennis. Uh, Okay, you typed it twice. All right, I got you. Um, Ingrid Carlson, do you like Graham Alkyd Walnut Oil for quick drying? Uh, not really. If I'm going to be picky, I've actually tried it. Uh, Alkyd Walnut Oil Paint. Uh, walk, uh, uh, Alkyd Walnut Medium. No, I've, I've used it before. And um, it, to me, it's not really a fast dryer. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me because walnut on his on its own 
is a slow dryer, so combining a slow dryer with a fast dryer kind of evens out. Um, but I've used it in the past, and you know, the nice thing about walnut oil is that it has less of a yellowing tendency. So if I'm if I'm going to compare walnut oil, walnut alkyd to just walnut, then yes, I would like to use the walnut alkyd more. Hopefully I'm not too critical of that medium. Sorry, Ingrid. Uh, hey, painting with uh, Samir. Interesting to see that you don't use bigger brushes with that background blocking. Uh, I Yeah, I, I typically won't jump right in to large brushes. Uh, and I actually like to start off with a medium to small sized brushes just because the smaller brushes allow me to have more control, such as what I'm about to do now, the light on the beak here. So the way I work uh, with Alla Prima and pretty much in general uh, is I, I go for the most obvious things uh, that will lead to the um, illusion of form, the illusion of a realistic image. So for me, it's more important to go after things that catch the eye right away. Uh, that's a little bit more, I guess, realistic than going in with a bunch of flat shapes with a large brush. But I have done that too. I've done that too. Um, hey, Doreen. Great. Everyone should have a landscape picture or a statue of a chicken in their kitchen on a different subject slightly. Is there a disadvantage to using a medium with acrylics? Um, I actually have not used a medium with acrylics. Every time I've used acrylics, I've used just the acrylics and water. But tell you what, um, if I were to recommend a medium, I would recommend a um, I would recommend a gloss. I do know that they sell gloss uh, mediums, and that's about the one thing I don't like um, about acrylic is that it's not very glossy like oil paint is. But that can easily be corrected with the right uh, the right medium. Let's see here. Um, hey, Mina, how do you get the color more intense? Uh, so the intensity of the color really depends on the brand of paint that you buy. If we're talking about intensity in terms of the chroma, that's why I threw in Winsor Lemon here because I knew that there were going to be a lot of bright greenish tones to this uh, rooster scene. So... Uh, it's I wouldn't be able to get this kind of brightness, at least to the green background, if I didn't have Winsor Lemon. If I had a Cadmium Lemon, it'd be even more bright, but too bright. So that's why I went with the Winsor Lemon. Let's see. Um, hey, G-Maze. Uh, do you ever do charcoal drawing? Actually, yes. Um, this morning I was using charcoal uh, for my uh, online class. We started a new project. Uh, and again, my online students can work at their own pace. So even though I started a new project, everyone that's watching that may be in the online classes, uh, you can work on your work on your own pace. But I did use charcoal uh, simply because it's uh, it's easier to see on the screen and easier to do demonstrations with it. All right, so now that I have enough of the background and the the, the chicken, <laughs> the rooster, chicken, whatever, um, now let's go ahead and make some realism out of this, make some sense out of this scene. And I'm always fascinated about, uh, with uh, animal art. Uh, because there's so much to explore in terms of paint handling. And you don't really have to worry too much about the likeness. Not that much. And I, I find these paintings to be more fun and expressive uh, in Alla Prima. Uh, let's see. Uh, what have I missed? Hey, Griox. Uh, go listen, Chicken Colo from Serbo American Folk Orchestra. Hmm. I haven't heard of it, but that's uh, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, hey, Ingrid, are you using long-handled brushes? Uh, yeah, I have both. Um, 
short handle and long handle. Uh, I prefer long handle, but these were on sale, so that's why I have them. But I prefer long handle. Hey, Tanya, could you possibly paint a black stallion? Ooh, that's a good idea. At some point. That's a good idea, Tanya. Ooh, we can look into that. Hey there, power, courage, and wisdom. Um, Hayupari, in the wake of his untimely passing, would you consider doing a portrait of um, Edward Van Halen? Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot and do some research here. I'm going to screenshot your comment, and I'm going to look more into this. I finally learned that I can screenshot without ruining my stream. Um, so thank you for that. I will look into that. Uh, hey, Ingrid Carlson. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, do I w do one-on-one -on -one internet instruction? Y if you would like to have a something very close to one-on-one -on -one instruction, um, the live stream tier for my uh, Patreon, for my online classes, uh, the $20 a month tier, is uh, very much like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I film my lessons three days a week uh, for my online students, and I film them live using the same software, and we have about an audience of three or four um, in there. So it's uh, really the closest that I have to one-on-one -on -one instruction. And um, at, at the most, I have, I think, uh, at, at the most, I'll have maybe six people uh, there. So definitely check out the online classes and in particular the live stream tier. I was just streaming this morning and there were three. Uh, I was streaming pretty much specifically with three in the audience. But then, of course, after the stream ended, the stream uh, then it becomes available. Once YouTube has processed it, it becomes available for all online students. Mm, let, me, let me see. Um, hey, Alan, SKB6, can you just explain the fat over lean rule again in regards to using liquid or another medium? Uh, thanks, Lorraine. Yeah, of course, Lorraine. Um, so, fat over lean, in a nutshell, basically means you don't want to introduce too much oil too soon in a layered painting. So if your painting is going to have multiple layers. But in Alla Prima, if you use too much oil or too much medium, it can lead to cracking. I do have a painting in my possession that has cracked a little bit. Uh, and it's a painting that was done of me. Uh, I'm not going to mention the artist that did it. But an artist gave me a painting. Um, I posed for a open studio uh, in my early 20s. And uh, the painting is less than, of course, it's less than 15 years old. But in the bottom corner, I knew that the artist used a lot of stand oil in the corner. It was an Alla Prima painting, and the stand oil, the big accumulation of stand oil, is cracking. It's actually cracking. And I'm amazed that a painting created during my lifetime is actually cracking. It's the first one I've ever seen to actually start cracking. But the artist that painted it is amazing. She's an amazing, amazing artist. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Sky. Uh, I found that when I use titanium white to lighten it, lighten a color, it dulls it down and makes it ugly. Do you recommend any other type of white? Flake white, definitely. Um, it has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much. Therefore, you have a thicker consistency of uh, paint. Now, if you don't have access to flake white uh, in your region or province, or you you're, uh, you don't want to use lead-based uh, colors, which is perfectly fine, um, then I, I would recommend Gamblin's flake white replacement. Hey, Steven. Hello. Oh, sorry if you uh, fell asleep there. I heard that these videos can be good sleeping aids, though. Hey, Mina. Um, and the midtones, how can I get it right? Uh, should I get a dark value and then lighten it up? And uh, Okay, so so for the midtones, if you're doing a la prima, it's actually easier to start dark and work light. If you're doing classical, a planned layered painting, it's actually easier to work uh, light and then layer dark. 
So it's, a, it's the opposite with um, the classical approach. So if you're doing a la prima, so if you're doing uh, similar to this, then I suggest, as you're seeing here, working darker and then building light. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, he he, comma, it's me. Oh, nice. So I love that that username. Uh, I have a question. I never did oil painting before, and I just wanted to know: uh, Do you put your uh, brush in the medium before painting it uh, in the pigment or uh, comma color? Um, no, I I I haven't touched my medium yet. This is my medium. It's a Thixotropic uh, gel-like medium. This is. Um, Venetian medium. Uh, I haven't used any medium yet. I do, however, thin out the paint with my solvent for the background. In particular, you can actually notice it here, actually. You can notice it's thinner here. Um, since I'm using Gamsol, I don't really care if I get it on my fingers. Now you can see it's actually very thin, whereas this is quite thick. See how this doesn't come off? And since I'm using Gamsol, I don't really care of get about getting it on my fingers. Um, but just to show you, um, this is thinner in the background, this is thicker, but I haven't used medium yet. I will use medium uh, when I want to layer thinner paint onto thicker paint. That's when I'll use the medium. But thank you for the question, and I really like your username. Hey Ron Anderson, how many paintings a day, uh, and are they easy to sell? Uh, no, they are not easy to sell at all, Ron. <laughs> I have the same struggles that I think um, everyone that's not really a big time artist has. Um, I'm not a big time artist. I'm very much a small time painter myself. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to sell. Um, at the moment, I only have one painting on Etsy available, but I will be putting all of these uh, virtual painting session paintings up for sale uh, once I have the prints ready for them. I want to sell prints first. The prints I want to sell at, of course, a more reasonable price. Uh, an original will cost in, I don't know, anywhere near um, 400 or 300. A print will cost maybe about 100 or less. So I will be making prints. How many paintings a day? No more than one. No more than one. And when I'm doing the classical approach, uh, one painting can take me up to two months with the classical approach. So it's a little bit different there. Um, hey, SVR official, I love how Yupari is keeping the art of portrait painting alive. Oh, thank you. I admire all of your work. Oh, thank you so much for your wonderful comment, SVR official. Hey, Angry Carson, uh, do you uh, do you do most of your paintings a la prima? Actually, no, I don't do most of my paintings a la prima. I do a la prima specifically for these uh, painting sessions because I can get a lot done really fast. Um, the trade back, however, is that it's it's not going to be anywhere near as uh, quote unquote realistic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because for the most part, this subject matter, I think does better expressive, um, impressionistic than highly realistic. Um, and that is, just down to my personal preference and aesthetic. Um, so uh, for the most part, I actually use classical. And I teach with the classical approach. And I recommend the classical approach uh, for anyone just beginning or anyone learning how to paint. And that is what I teach uh, in my online classes. But I am going to move into Alla Prima quite soon. But first, I'm going to introduce uh, practical figure drawing uh, for my online classes because it's very important to be able to draw the human frame. And it just helps with pretty much everything. So please, please uh, feel free to ask me any questions on your mind as I'm painting. Um, let me see what if I missed. Hey, uh, uh, and Hinduri, um, should you pay attention to textures or is this correct value enough? For example, textures of the feathers in this case. 
uh, or thicker paint for texture of wood. I would I would pay close attention to the texture. You're right. Um, and this is why I'm not painting with any medium just yet because I want the healthiest, uh, thickest amount of paint possible for me to build onto. Uh, Bob Ross is is famous for this technique, the Alla Prima technique. It's not unique to him, however, uh, nor is it unique to Bill Alexander. This is a technique that's been out for centuries, um, Alla Prima. And the thing about Alla Prima is that uh, the way that the paint mechanics works is the thinner paint tends to stick on to the thicker paint. And that's, that's when I will use the medium, but also I'll use the medium somewhere in the middle because once I use the medium, in about 30 or 40 minutes or so, the paint will actually start to tack up. And tack by tack up, I mean uh, start to uh, solidify and uh, will allow me to layer even more. And that's when we'll put in the details of the feathers. The thing about Alla Prima that makes it so difficult, everyone, is that you're juggling color, value, composition, everything all at once. That's what makes it so difficult. But that's also what makes it so fun, if you ask me. Um, let me see. Hey, Erica. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're just making an educated mess. I think I made the, the bird's head a little too big, but I can always crop it. Oh, thank you. Um, hey, M. Kutch, uh, no, you didn't miss m much. No, you didn't miss much. Hey, Troy. Yep, time for the rooster challenge. Yep. Uh, hey, Ingrid, why are portrait paintings more difficult? Excellent question, Ingrid. I w I'm happy to talk about that. Why are portrait paintings so difficult? Um, portrait paintings are so difficult because of the awkward factor due to the psychology involved in portraiture if we're talking about human portraits it doesn't get any more difficult than that the human face is something that we human beings are so attuned to observing uh, a rooster not so much I, I don't have to worry about the likeness of the rooster if it doesn't look like this exact rooster who cares uh, but with a human portrait uh, I nine out of ten it will be more noticeable when something isn't as accurate which is why uh, for my online classes for my online students with portraiture in particular I create drawing templates for my students to use the drawing templates simplify everything for them very similar to the Barg method of uh, drawing Um, but that that's what makes portraiture so difficult to answer your question is that we're so fine-tuned to every little detail every little nuance of uh, What a human being should look like we're so used to seeing photographs pretty much every second of every day of people There's ads everywhere. You see faces on everything. There's billboards just everything everything um, it, it, There's human faces on everything and that is what makes it so difficult because we're so fine-tuned to noticing any little thing, any little thing that's off. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, hey, XRO Pro, uh, the mindset. Um, mindset, what, what do you mean by mindset? If you don't mind elaborating a little bit, uh, I think you you mean it's just a different mindset. I think that's what you mean. Different mindset when we are painting people. You're right. If that's if that's what you meant. Um, hey, uh, Denali got Gotti. Uh, wait, Bob Ross painted with oil. I thought it was acrylic the whole time. Uh, no, he painted with oil paint. Yep, Bob Ross painted with oil paint. I do think in some of the episodes he did start off with acrylic paint. I remember a specific episode seeing Bob Ross holding an acrylic palette. I think that exists. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I remember seeing one of the Bob Ross videos where he did use acrylic, at least in the beginning. Uh, 
Uh, let me see. What is a template? Ingrid Carlson. A template, a template um, is a drawing tool that I create for my online students that simplifies uh, the proportions in particular for a human portrait. So it's pretty much a, a perfect outline indicating the delineation between light and shadow and specific forms in a sequence uh, ranging from simple to complex. And that's what I create. I custom create them for my online students to download and to use as a drawing aid for their uh, portrait painting projects. I don't know if any other teachers create templates. I'm not entirely sure, but that's something that I invented uh, for my online students. I'm sure some teachers out there probably do the same thing, but I'm just not aware of it. Let's see, what have I missed? Hey, Troy, uh, is that like the bark plates you're referring to? Yeah, yep, they're like the bark plates, but I simplify them a little bit more than the bark plates. But they are inspired from the bark plates, Troy, yep. Uh, hey, Gabby, uh, BB, I'm enjoying seeing your animal paintings. Uh, thank you, I'm glad that you're enjoying the uh, animal paintings. Thank you. Uh, hey, Sky, what's your opinion on painting from a reference? A picture that someone else took and selling it. Um, many say it shouldn't be done, but I think it's a huge deal. Um, hey Ingrid, I I know some teachers use tracing. Uh, something like that, but it, it's a little more uh, conceptualized for the students to be able to to study. It's not like j just a tracing. Um, it, it's a little more conceptualized for my students. Uh, so using a photo reference that you didn't take a picture of, uh, you can use it if and only if it is a, uh, there I am throwing real analysis terms, but you can use it if and only if the photo reference is copyright free and you know the legality of it. So for instance, Unsplash, notice how the paint is thin because I added a little bit of Gamsol. Unsplash, the reference where, or this, the website, sorry, where this reference comes from, is copyright free. You can le uh, read the legality of the uh, the on the website. You can read the legal section on the website, and they say that artists are free to use these paint uh, these uh, images. Artists are free to use their images and create their own original artworks and sell them. Even photographers can use Unsplash, edit the photos, and then create their own digital version which I think if a photographer can take that picture, bump up the contrast, change the saturation, copy and paste things into it, and then sell it as a print as many, uh, as many do, especially on Etsy, um, then we painters have no problem, no problem at all. And in fact, you need resources like Unsplash these days uh, just because travel is limited. Uh, resources are limited, so that it's it's important to take full advantage of resources like Unsplash and Pexels. Uh, let me see here. Hmm. Hey, Sam Stuff Official. Yo, it's me. What's up? What's up, yo? Uh, hey, Stephen. Uh, Bob underpainted a couple of paintings with acrylic and then finished them in, in oils. Yep, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing specific episodes with that. Hello there, Emo IQ. When I, th uh, I think when you draw a portrait for a human being, you're dealing with his slash her soul, personality, mood, emotions, etc. It's painting so many things, and all of these human things are complex. Oh, yeah, a world of complexity there. Uh, hey, Ingrid Carlson, I have never painted a portrait. Can I start with with uh, with me? So with my classes, yeah, uh, certainly. Um, my classes are designed, again, for anyone of any skill level, whether you're just starting or you have several years. I have students from very different backgrounds, 
And uh, the ones that start off with no experience at all, it's it's wonderful to see in particular how they how they adopt and they develop their skills so quickly. And it really depends on the the curriculum, to be honest. My curriculum is based on the fundamentals, uh, fundamental uh, principles, starting off with shape, uh, value, color, uh, linear perspective. We're going to get into figure, practical figure drawing soon. Um, so yeah, you can definitely start off with us if you are interested. And again, I have links to that in the description. You can also check out, you can just type in uh, patreon.com slash artist and they will show up. And all of the lessons are organized into care, uh, into um, into welcoming packages. I have welcome packages that have the playlists of uh, containing each uh, lesson associated with each project to make it easier for students to go through the lessons at their own pace. But all of that, all of the fundamentals, leads you to things like this. Uh, to where you can do anything, really. So you look at that. I have the legs a little off, but it doesn't matter. Uh, because what matters is light, shadow, shape, composition. That's more important than the likeness of this individual rooster. Uh, hey, Denali, um, what am I painting on? This is a 11 by 14 inch uh, wooden panel that has been painted on with oil paint, but uh, initially gessoed with acrylic, but it has several layers of oil paint on it. Hey Doreen, all joking aside, about a year or two ago, I was introduced to two of the most beautiful roosters I have ever seen. I look forward to uh, feeding them not long after a fox. Well, need I say, oh, I'm sorry. The fox got to it. Hey, Bert, 2008 before 6, 9. Oh, thank you. I'm just laying in the big, big masses. Let me get a different brush out. Um, which, by the way, this is my favorite type of brush ever, ever, ever. Uh, it is a Princeton Catalyst Poly to Bristle. I have links to that to these brushes in the description box down below. Just scroll down and look for the little section that says my favorite brush and you will find it. And let's put in that sky blue color. Hey Denali Gottli, I want to join your classes. I have absolutely zero experience wanting to paint as a hobby. Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, let me let me type out the the uh, link for you, and for everyone interested. And the online classes again are are ten dollars a month. Just ten dollars a month. Patreon.com slash Upari Artist. I just um, type the link there for you, and uh, select the online class slash mentor tier. And as soon as uh, a new student joins, I quickly go in and send them a, uh, a message containing the specific uh, la uh, playlists and everything so that they can go through the uh, online lessons at their own pace. So you can take the lessons at your own pace. You don't have to feel rushed. And you can send me images each week. You have the ability to send me images of your artwork each week to be featured in the virtual classroom. So of course a little bit of yellow ochre for the sky blue, but not too much because then I'll have a green sky. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Let's see. Hey, uh, Barha Watch. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Awesome. Oh, I'm glad that uh, you like the way the painting looks already. Thank you. Um, oh, thank you so much, uh, Bar Barha Watch. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you so much for your donation to uh, my YouTube channel and to uh, the, the stream. So thank you so much. Shout out for you with the loaded paintbrush. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Let me see if I've missed any comments. Hey, Sky, when mixing skin colors, how do you know what colors to start with? Question mark. Like, do you know what colors uh, to, to make by heart? Actually, I kind of do. Uh, I do list out certain combinations of colors uh, for flesh tones, in particular, um, the layering of flesh tones for my online students. I do actually do that. Um, what have I missed? What have I missed? Hey, Doreen, uh, is your favorite brush also sometimes referred to as a cat's tongue brush? No, this is a, uh, these are synthetic bristle mix. Cat's tongue are a little more, um, exotic. It's a little more expensive. And again, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, apologize if I mispronounce your name. Barhawaj. Um... Hey, Kuvsan. Uh, there I go with my pronunciation. Uh, hey, bro, how are you, man? I'm doing good, doing good. Had a rough start to the day, but I'm doing good. If I sound a little bit upset, I apologize. I kind of had a rough day. Uh, I'm not going to mention anything, but I had a rough day. Uh, but now things are looking up uh, with the painting session. Uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to come online to watch your streams. I miss them, man. I appreciate your work. Love from South Africa. Oh, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Hey, Bacon Bayan. Uh, hey, me and my dad are watching you. Awesome. Well, I hope you are enjoying the stream. Uh, hey, Emo IQ. Uh, enjoying your live. And it's kind of helping me get back into drawing because I've been going through art block. Oh, believe me. I If I wasn't doing this, uh, I'd probably... Yeah, probably be going through artist block as well. Trust me, it's more common than you think. <laughs> Believe me, it's very common. You're not alone there, buddy. All right, so now that I have a lot covered for this rooster, now I'm going to have to go in and put more specifics. Hey, Bacon Bind. Yeah, my day's already better. My day's already better. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad I'm saying your name correctly. Hey, Christopher. Uh, Richard. The days that break you make you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I definitely agree with that one. But I don't feel broken. I'm good. I'm alright. Just letting you know I'm a human too. Alright, so how about more specifics now for this wonderful... A rooster. So I'm going to remember the cat painting from a little while ago where I kind of hyper focused on the central uh, focal point. I'm going to now hyper focus on the central focal point here. Um, hey, Barhawaj, is that a Egbert brush? Oh, yeah, buddy. This is definitely an Egbert brush. Uh, these are Egbert, actually. They are uh, size six Princeton Catalyst Polytip bristles. And again, I have Amazon affiliate links to these brushes in the description box down below uh let's see what have i missed hey ingrid carlson oh thank you oh thank you so much for saying i, I deserve a larger following i'm thankful for all of you that are here every single one of you and the dialogue in particular since we can read uh the chat after you know the stream is, is up. Everyone can read the chat afterwards as a pre-recorded video. I think that adds so much to the experience. Hey, Joanne. Um, hi, Pari. Why do you add oil paint over the acrylic gesso, and how long does it take uh, to dry before you can paint on it? Interesting question, because right next to me, I actually have my gesso, just by chance. Uh, it was just right next to me. Um, this is Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso. This is the gesso that I highly recommend. Um, and it works perfectly fine. I mean, it has a lot of tooth to it, and I have no, no issues with it. Um, so why the question is, uh, how long does it take to dry before you can paint on it? I wait overnight, uh, Joanne. I wait overnight. 
So I just so and sometimes in uh, at night wait for it to dry, sand lightly, and then repeat the process. So usually overnight. So about seven to eight hours, just to be safe. Hey Troy Roberts, hey oops. <laughs> in one of your online classes, could you one day do basic color mixing and loading your brush? Anyone on the fence with the online classes are uh, great. Uh, go through your own. P oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, in particular, I had a lot of suggestions for different skin tones. So um, lighter skin tones, uh, darker skin complexions, um, which the start of project four, the new project that we just started, uh, the model, the, the skin complexion of the models varies much more uh, than, than before. And it's, it's by popular request. So yep, Troy, we can definitely do that and we will. Hey, Hanin. Hello. Hey, Glenn Bennett. Uh, I hit my art. Let's see. I hit my art block after. Oh, no. After suffering a stroke. I found your videos, which helped me during my recovery. I'm now back to painting, although slowly. Oh, thank you so much for your, your uh, wonderful uh, heartwarming comment. Um, I'm so glad that, that uh, my videos are, are helping you and pr providing you with comfort. That means a lot to me. Uh, thank you so much. Let's see. Hey, Ingrid, how many videos do you have when we sign up? I believe we are on number 27, I think, now, uh, in terms of the number of videos available for you to watch in the online classes. And we are creating, uh, we're uploading three, or I'm uploading three, uh, three lessons a week. So pretty much every day that you're seeing me here in the evening, for me, it may be a different time for you. Uh, I have already filmed a lesson in the morning. So some of my students actually like to benefit from a marathon. So they, they will watch the morning, um, the online class, and then they'll tune in for the evening virtual painting session. Again, the virtual painting session is, this is more of a fast pace, like fast, 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 fast play, eh, pace, uh, moving through the steps. The online classes are slow. They're slowed down. Everything is uh, described step by step. See now how the paint is resisting to add a little bit there. Now, for the first time, for the first time, drum roll, <laughs> drum roll, we're gonna thin out the paint a little bit with the medium. This is the first time I am using the medium today in this painting. And see that, how the thinner paint tends to stick onto the thicker paint. So Bob Ross was right. So let's see what have I missed. Uh, hey, uh, Rahim. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, I've missed a lot of questions. Uh, uh, vous, okay, so this one is in French. I think that means which medium. Uh, this is Venetian medium. I have it right here. Venetian medium by uh, Roblev. Venetian medium. Um, hey, uh, Alan SKB6. Do you have to gesso before starting, excuse me, starting a painting and what are the benefits? Uh, I gesso over a surface if it is just a wooden surface or uh, suppose it's a cotton canvas, uh, a generic cotton canvas that I kind of seldom use these days. But if it's a cotton canvas, then I will gesso over it um, or even a linen canvas that doesn't have that great of a surface, I'll gesso over it. But mainly um, the panel that I recommend my students use, 
which is a ampersand gesso board museum series flat panel. Um, I actually like the gesso that it comes with, so I don't add any extra gesso to it. Uh, let's see, I may have missed some other comments. Uh, hey Doreen, do you plan to make the background fade out or fuzzy? Yep, I do. Uh, it'll bring our rooster friend forward, won't it? Moving forward, I love the idea of uh, black beauty. I love horses. Yeah, yeah, this will definitely get faded into the background as we move along. Hey Erica, I think the Amazon link to your brushes is broken. What? I just changed the links. Oh no. Um, that's weird. Okay. I just double checked the links like a couple days ago. Uh, thank you, Erica, for pointing that out. I got to check that again. Good old technology. Hey, Kuvishan. Um, hey, bro, I wanted to communicate with you via chat. Are you on Instagram Messenger? I want to send you, um, so sending art images, that's actually part of the, uh, online classes. Um, uh, so my students can send original artworks uh, each month. Uh, and I set it up that way because I want my students to have as much time as they uh, as they need um, to send their images. So if you don't mind uh, checking out the online classes, that is actually one of the benefits in the online classes. The virtual painting, or sorry, the, virtu the virtual, or the... Uh, the virtual classroom is designed so that I feature everyone's images that they send me. So it would actually fall in perfectly with um, the online classes, if you don't mind checking them out. Uh, Kuvisan. Hey, Mina. I think the chicken looks angry. <laughs> it's an angry chicken. Angry bird. <laughs> it's an angry bird. <laughs> hey, Doreen. Uh, God bless you. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay, that's not to me, but thank you anyway for the, the kindness that uh, everyone is sharing with each other. And I hope that, again, that you uh, have a, um, a healthy recovery. Hey, Hardjot, what's up? Uh, no headless horseman. Not yet. We're not that close to Halloween. Uh, I had a lot of suggestions, remember, Hardjot, for the, for the rooster last time. So we've got the rooster. Hey, Brahawaja. Um, what brand of white is the most opaque or even the brightest? You know, I'd say for the brightest of the bright. From what I believe, um, the brightest you can possibly get is titanium white from uh, Old Holland. From what I heard. On the contrary, the most opaque and brightest would probably be flake white from Williamsburg or old, old, eh, or old Holland, which is what this is. Hey, Berg, 2008 You probably can you add a link for the tin canisters you use for liquid storage? Um, I can, oh, right, I do have a link. Um, I'll have to copy and paste it from my uh, materials list for the students. I don't mind doing that. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and double check that for you. I actually just use, uh, I think it was like $15 or something from from Home Depot uh, metal container. Hey, Fred. Uh, you mentioned thin paint sticks to thick. Can you address how that relates to fat over lean? Uh, it, it, it doesn't really uh, relate to fat over lean, uh, Fred. It, they may sound like similar concepts, but they're, they're a little different because thin paint and thick paint can be both fat or lean, really. It depends on the oil content, Fred. So fat over lean depends on the oil content. So you want, in general... Uh, when you're layering a painting, in the later stages, you want more oil. In the earlier stages, you want less oil. And the reason being is that you want the paint film in the earlier layers 
to be dry faster than the later layers. If the later layers dry faster than the earlier layers, that could harm the paint film, which could then lead to cracking of the paint film in however many years. Usually it won't happen right away. Hmm, let's see, um... Uh, hey Ingrid, can you- can I paint a full painting with alkyd oil paint? You can, but you'd be uh, restricting your painting time to about maybe two hours a session at the most because alkyd will start to uh, dry on your brushes and on your painting surface within a matter of minutes, really. Not completely dry, but it will start to dry. Let's see. Echo Vishan. Um, the next painting you should do, uh, I'm thinking everyone would love, is an ocean view. Yeah, we can look into some ocean views. And yeah, everyone, please, uh, if you have a, if you have subject matter in mind, I haven't introduced any crowd questions yet, but that's usually one of them. Um, but if you, at any point in the stream, have some kind of subject matter in mind that you would like me to paint in uh, one of the uh, future virtual painting sessions, let me know. So let's see. Um Hey, Doreen, uh, the vlog has kept me connected. I think we're referring to someone else, but I'm glad that uh, if we're referring to these videos, uh, I hope that you're enjoying these streams, Doreen. Hey, Bert, 2008, 469. Uh, yeah, a Home Depot is really the... If you have a local Lowe's or Home Depot nearest to you, to be honest, I would just recommend that, uh, going there and not not spending any money on shipping and just going and getting the metal canister. And I shouldn't really say this, but I didn't use a metal canister for more than 10 years, probably. No, I'd say about nine years uh, of painting. I didn't use metal canisters and my studio didn't en engulf in flames or anything like that. Um, so the chances of spontaneous combustion are not that high, but just for added comfort, you can have a metal container. Let me see. Uh, hey, Ingrid Carlson. Well, yeah, if you like an ocean scene, yeah, I can look into those. Hey, Denali got Gaudi. Um, what do you think about adding linseed oil to acrylic paints to move the oil? Okay, to mm, no, I I would be very cautious with that. Uh, yeah, oil paint and acrylic don't mix unless the oil paint is. Or sorry, unless the acrylic is dry, you can add acrylic. No, you can add oil onto dry acrylic, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't mix wet acrylic and uh, any uh, oil painting mediums. And the reason being is that the acrylic would dry in a matter of seconds. The oil paint would, of course, take its sweet time to dry. So while one is drying in a matter of minutes, the other is taking days to dry. Uh, that could cause some serious problems with the paint film. All right, let's see. Hey, Sky, how would you hang a wood panel? Uh, frame. I would usually frame it uh, to hang it. I wouldn't actually add something to the back of it, as a lot of um, you'll see in a lot of uh, craft stores. I would rather frame it than use uh, an attachment on the frame to hang the painting. 
Hey, Ulfred, winter landscape with northern lights. Oh, yeah. Believe me, we will get to winter scenes once it's winter in, in my area. But I realize it could be different wherever everyone is. Hey, me, more. Uh, would love to see you do a sunset in the southwest desert, Arizona, New Mexico. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Thank you for the ideas. Hey, Steven, I painted the moon. Awesome. Uh, surface and my intention was for the paint to crack. Really? I did everything I could to get the paint to crack. It never did. By the way, it was an experiment. I did that too. Um, I put acrylic over an oil painting a long time ago to see if it would crack. The thing never cracked. Um, so sometimes, even if you try to get the paint film to crack, sometimes it won't. But when you don't want it to crack, that's probably when it will. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kuvishan. Bro, besides paintings, what else takes up your time when not painting? Uh, what else takes up my time? Animals, basically. Um, anytime I'm not painting, I'm caring for my animals. I have, um, and of course, uh, among other things, but my mainly my animals. Uh, I have three ball pythons, two bearded dragons, and some tarantulas. I love them to death. Um, I enjoy creating terrariums and enclosures for my pet tarantulas and for my uh, ball pythons. I'm currently caring for uh, my fiance's king snake. Um, she bought a king snake, a baby king snake, California king snake. Um, but it, it, I don't think that her family is cool with it, so. Uh, I'm taking care of the baby California king snake, which has bitten me about 10 times now, <laughs> but you wouldn't even notice. I've been bitten, I think, about probably four times. I think I was bitten twice this morning, or not this morning, but this afternoon on my my right hand, and no marks at all. Um, but yeah, I, I love animals. I also love, uh, I well, I guess love is a strong word, but I really enjoy um, uh, some crafty things like creating sushi rolls, like maki, maki rolls. Like I like making California rolls, um, you know, different types of um, sushi rolls I enjoy. Hey, Doreen, uh, most roosters look mean. They're always defending their... <laughs> Harum, uh, they're very territorial. P.S. The previous comment was referring to your videos. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're enjoying the videos. Hey, Mina. Uh, do I varnish every painting? Every painting that I intend to sell um, or every painting I deem worthy, uh, I varnish. I do. The ones that I don't deem worthy or the ones that I don't sell, I chop up uh, to save room. But every one of the paintings that uh, will be sold or is for sale or will be for sale, I do varnish. And if we're talking about varnish, I've recently discovered or I've recently switched over to, where is it, where is it? Uh, right over here, uh, Gamvar, Gamvar Gloss. Uh, I like Gamvar because you can varnish when the painting is touched dry instead of waiting the whole six months. And yes, I'm getting a little bit of red into the background, but the background was too saturated anyway. So it kind of works out. Hey, Zara. Hello. Hey, Doreen. We would love to camp under the northern lights. Ooh, that sounds fun. Hey, Bert, 2008 before 6 9. Oh, well, thank you for stopping by. Hey, Anthony. Hello. Hey, Arab movies. Yeah, I do get that the rooster looks a little territorial. I gotta make make this rooster look more mean. 
Where's Harjot? I I can make this this rooster look like a Super Saiyan if you want. <laughs> make the rooster go Super Saiyan. Where are you, Harjot? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, hey Marty. Oh, you're not that late. We're uh, we're pretty much just getting started. I'd say there's so much left to do with this this rooster painting. Oh, it's it's not almost finished. There's a lot to do. Uh, hey, Joanne, how do you get one paint to go over another without mixing? That really, um, you, you have to think about the the thickness of the paint. Um, so I am now using medium, as you're noticing here. This little thingy here, this is my medium. Uh, so I do thin it when I want to paint to stick. This rooster looks a little too friendly. I need to make it look a little more mean. <laughs> mm, let me see. Is there a, when a painting is touch dry can we stick things on it when storing? Uh, I'd be careful with what you stick onto a painting. One time, uh, back when I was filming like the daily Upari videos, um, I would tape my I would tape a paper palette onto a, the painting, onto the section that was touched dry, and after a while, I found that it would kind of lift off some of the paint. So I would probably recommend not doing that, uh, uh, just because if you could accidentally lift something off the paint. Oops, I was way wrong of a value. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kuvishan. Uh, thanks for the stream, bro. Not feeling too good. Thank you for the amazing painting, bro. Always, uh, I'll complete watching the stream later. Well, I hope you're you're feeling all right. I know that we've it's been a little crazy. In particular, my allergies have been acting up like crazy. Like I've been sneezing like nonstop. But no fever or anything, so no need to worry about me. It's just allergies. If you notice my hand, my thumb, I'm getting like a rash. So it's definitely allergies for me. Let me see. I'm trying to check, make sure I didn't miss any comments. Hey Anthony, I used Spike Lavender for the first time today. Uh, very strong odor of it. Is, um, it, it can be a, a bit of a strong odor at first, um, Anthony, but you, you learn to, uh, I don't know how to word it, but it it, it kind of grows on you, the, the smell of the Spike Lavender. Remember that Spike Lavender is uh, one of the best solvents uh, slash... Uh, thinners you can use for oil painting for the oil painting film not only that but spike lavender is also safer to breathe in than uh, than odorless mineral spirits is and I, I quite like it. it it does smell like a like a spa of some sort with the spike uh, with the lavender smell Uh, hey, Charles uh, Clopton, interesting choice of words. I love my tarantulas and my snakes to death. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry. No, no tarantula has ever been known to kill anyone. Um, ball pythons, the ones that I keep, they're not venomous, so. 
and I would I would take a bite from every single one of my tarantulas before getting getting bitten by my family chihuahua. For certain. I was bitten by a dachshund once when I was a kid, and man, that was the worst. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's probably one of the worst bites I've ever had. Let's see. Uh... Hey Nelly, what do you use to clean your brush? Um, so basically all of these brushes that you're seeing here, including these, I just use my solvent, um, whether it's Gamsol or Turpentine or Spike Lavender to clean. Um, usually I won't use Spike Lavender to clean because it's such an expensive solvent. I just use it mainly to thin out paint and draw. But um, for instance, it's a little different with these. With these, I clean with solvent, and then I clean with hot water and dish soap. I have Dawn dish soap, the blue one, with the little um, baby duckling picture on the front. Uh, hey, Ingrid, can you recommend an a, uh, inexpensive oil paint to start painting with? Uh, in terms of inexpensive, I suggest uh, Gamblin or Winsor Newton. They are artist-grade oil paints. Um, they're pretty solid paints to start off with but again they're not that much cheaper than say uh, Williamsburg and Old Holland I will give you a really big uh, probably a big money saving tip Ingrid if you really want to save money um, you can bypass cadmium cadmiums in particular they're more expensive so for instance uh, I actually have a tube of it here um, uh, you can get a Winsor Red. Uh, Winsor Red is much, much cheaper than Cadmium Red. This is the Cadmium Red Vermilion. This one, this tube is about $40 US for me. Um, this is about like $8 US. And you wouldn't notice the difference between the two unless you're layering uh, in a very refined classical style then you'd notice slight differences also with the pigmentation it's different the Winsor red is like really light the cadmium red vermilion has a lot of weight to it but you can if you want to save money uh, use Winsor newton and gamblin and get Winsor yellow and get Winsor red instead of getting the cadmiums and you'll, you'll be fine just know that Winsor does take a little bit uh, a little longer to dry than uh, Old Holland and um, and uh, Williamsburg. Uh, so thank you for that question, and thanks everyone for all the questions. Alrighty, so now it is time to introduce the first crowd question. I think everybody that's been here for some time knows the first crowd question that I always ask. So, my crowd question is, wait for it, what is currently on your easel? I usually start with this one because it can vary from day to day. So... On my easel, we currently have a painting of a rooster. That is the answer that I am submitting for the crowd question. So let's start off with this. Uh, what is currently on your easel?
Hey Joanne, uh, the beak shape is wrong. Could you please use this to show us how you fix it? Um, hey Zara, oh awesome. You have project one on your easel. Awesome. Hey Shia, working on a pencil still life. Hey Henry, uh, Wind, wind Wallow just found the pumpkin painting yesterday. I'm painting a tomato still life. Awesome. Hey Julie, just completed the turban pumpkin. Two turban pumpkin. Awesome. Um, so about the beak, I was just about to get to the beak. Um, so, for instance, I start general to specific. So. Uh, in general, in general, in general, when you're working general to specific, you're working wrong to less wrong. Um, th that's the way it goes. You're working wrong to less wrong uh, with general to specific. So you begin with something that's meh, like it's close enough, and then you work it towards, I guess that works. And then eventually you get to the point where that eh, looks about right. Uh, so that's kind of the, the, the thinking process. I can do anything to the shape of the beak. I can shrink it, uh, enlarge it. And what I do to answer your question is I add shapes on top of shapes and I build it as a sequence of shapes that I can relate to one another. Instead of thinking of it as a beak, I think of it as um, maybe like a, a curved rectangular shape. Wonderful question though, thank you. Huh. I think I like I like that. General general to specific means wrong to less wrong. Working wrong to less wrong. I, I like that. I've never said that before, but I think I'm gonna start saying that more. Uh let's see. Hey Sky. By opening uh by the opening of my titanium white paint tube, there's a light gray paint uh foaming, so when I paint uh, when I push the paint, gray comes out before the white. What do you think causes that? That's probably the oil uh, sky. Um, that's probably just the oil separating from the pigment, or it's just really oily. What you can do, sky, is open up the paint tube and um, stick a piece of paper towel into the top, kind of like covering up a nosebleed, and then flip it over and leave it for uh, I guess overnight or something and you will see a lot of the excess oil uh, get sucked up by the paper towel so that's one thing I'll do actually to uh, correct a paint tube that's too oily uh, hey Bahawad, uh what slash when was the exact moment you decided you wanted to go into uh, go into an uh, art as a career. Actually, I knew that I wanted art as a career uh, from high school. Like my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my senior year in high school in particular, that's when I went like full force into it. Um, uh, that's now like, what? Mm, I graduated 2009, so that's 11 years ago. That's when I really decided uh, that I wanted to pursue this. I did take some years off in between though. And uh, went to college, did the normal thing, and got a math degree and was a tutor, math tutor for a little while. In particular, I tutored um, mainly just calculus, um, calculus 1 and 2, and linear algebra. But I've always known that I wanted to pursue painting. It's just pursuing painting is it, the definition of uh, surviving as an artist is really, it's kind of changing over the years. And for me, I really want to come, I want to make the most out of using technology, video technology and painting together. Mm, let's see. Hey Zara, I have another project too, but I keep running into obstacles, constantly problem solving. That's correct. This is, um, you know, the art of problem solving with color. Hey Marty, I have two paintings on my easel currently unfinished, my self-portrait and landscape. Awesome. 
Hey, Alan, S SKB6 uh, uh, Sea Turtle. Awesome. Ingrid Carlson, I have a dog portrait. Awesome. Uh, can I use my water soluble paints in your class? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. We have uh, uh, quite a number of students using um, the water mixable oil paints. Definitely. Okay, I think I've neglected the rest of the rooster enough. So now it's time to start to put in more details. And now I'll start to use the medium because I want this layer to start to tack up. So again, with my online classes, you can use any of the... I have students using acrylics too. I mean, acrylics, pastels... Um, we have we we have uh, some students using gouache. The fundamentals are universal, and uh, I teach through the fundamentals. Of course, each lesson is uh, has specific instructions, but I oftentimes refer to the fundamentals. And this uh, this rooster that we're painting is a little bit more fluffy, and that's okay. Hey, Barco, uh, do I still ride? Oh, um, I wish. Uh, if we're talking about motorcycles, yeah, I wish. In fact, that's why I was kind of upset today. I got uh, kind of rejected <laughs> from uh, applying for a loan for a motorcycle. I guess I shouldn't make that much information public, but whatever. Full disclosure, I got rejected, uh, financially rejected. So uh, that's what upset me earlier today. But I'm... Um, Doing fine. Feel much better now. <laughs> uh, reading everyone's comments and, uh, but yeah, I, I wish it's just a financial thing. And uh, yeah, writing's kind of always been in my blood. I've always loved it. Started when I was twenty-two. Now I'm making the rooster closer to the red than the original. So what I'm going to do is go in with raw umber and yellow ochre to kind of brown out a little bit and a little bit of ivory black. But I don't quite uh, dislike the red that much, but it's a little red. And it's weird because looking at my screen, the red that you're seeing here is not the same as the red on my painting. It's kind of weird. Um, again, it's kind of hard to get the right color to show up. At least my computer screen is overdoing the red. Let's see here. What have I missed? Uh, hey, hey, Joanne. Uh, have you used uh, alkyds? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I I have alkyd titanium white. I have alkyd ivory black. I have alkyd alizarin crimson permanent. Um, just those three. I have uh, those three alkyds. And I, what I do is I add them into my paints to expedite the drying rate. Hey, Alexander. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for your wonderful comment. Hey, Sky, do you think it's weird for an artist to only paint slashed out people of their, their same um, same type of, uh, yeah. Um, 
No, I don't think so. We sometimes we paint uh, or draw what we are familiar with. Let's see. Hey, Brahuaj. Yeah, no worries. It's okay. Eventually, I'll be able to get that um, that part of my life back. But uh, for the time being, I'm good. No worries. Hey, Marty. Um, you think it's a bad habit for artists to use fingers sometimes instead of brushes? I'm tempted to do it, but sometimes during my portrait painting, or uh, to do it sometimes during my portrait paintings, but I guess uh, result is all that matters in the end. That's true, but at the same time, if you're using uh, like lead white um, and cadmiums, then it, it probably isn't the safest thing to do. But if you're not using cadmiums um, or lead white, then you'll be fine. Um, in general, when I want to smudge something or blur something, I just get a clean and dry synthetic brush to do the job. And thanks for all the, the uh, questions, everyone. Please send more questions. Now, of course, the background. I've got to fade the background. So speaking of softening things, let me try to do that, actually. Um, now, I could go in with my finger and, and blend it. It is titanium white. I haven't used flake white here. But I'll show you what I would do instead. What I would do instead, if there's enough paint, that is, on the surface, just go in with a clean and dry synthetic. And now you can just blend away. And see how we can now get the effect or the blur effect of the distant trees. Hey Sky, do you get discouraged when a painting doesn't sell? No, 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 I don't get discouraged. It happens too often for me not to get discouraged. Or for me to get discouraged. <laughs> if I sold all the time, then if then maybe I would get discouraged, but no, I don't I don't really get discouraged from that. Let's see. Hey, Barhawad, sorry for all the questions. Oh, no, don't apologize. Please ask all the questions you have um, on your mind. Again, uh, everyone, to be more practical, the more questions you send, the more you type, the more you respond, the more this stream is marketed to the viewers. That's that's the, the hidden analytics behind all of this. So don't ever feel like you're asking too many questions. Ask ask away. Ask any questions you have on your mind. So, uh, uh do you ever try to sell paints uh, from... Uh, do you ever try paints from Geneva Fine Arts? What are your thoughts? I haven't tried them, actually, but funny you mentioned that. Someone just sent me an email earlier today, or I think a message earlier today, about the same... Uh, paints, unless you sent it to me. Someone sent asked me about that, uh, and uh, I haven't really tried it. Oh, uh, let's see. Hey, Sky. Also, is framing wood panels expensive? Question mark. Well, what I do is I go to. <laughs> for some reason, I always. It's like I it's like I'm a representative of Michaels or something, but I'm not, trust me. Um 
no one no one pays me to say anything that I say. Um, but I oftentimes will just go to Michael's or something and get a, a ready-made frame and use, uh, use the 40% off coupon. Sometimes it's even 50%. Um, and... Um, and that's all I do. And what I do is I make sure to paint standard sizes. So 11 by 14 inches is a standard size. I can get a frame for this quite easily. Um, uh, 8 by 10 inches is a standard size. 9 by 12 inches is a standard size uh, where it's easier to find frames. So again, the more you type questions, the more you write comments, the more the uh, YouTube, uh, the the YouTube gods, the analytics uh, favor me, so that's also a way that you can help me. <laughs> a way that you can help the the channel and the streams is simply by typing your questions. Now the background is abstract, it's very loose, and it's what it needs to be. What I don't know, however, is how to make sense of this. I think I'm going to make this value a little bit less bright than the background. Um, is there a Gen uh, Geneva paints already have medium in them? But not a bad thing, not a bad thing, but you uh, need to know that. So if, if they do have a medium in them, then I'm sure that they are... They're probably, the oil to medium ratio is probably calibrated to have a specific effect. Um, hey, Angry Carlson. I'm glad you like the red on the rooster. I had to bring this red down. It was almost too red. It was competing with this red. Uh, but thank you. Hey, David Lawrence. Oh, thank you for your comment. Any chance of you doing your version of Mona Lisa? Question mark. It would be good to watch. Oh, that wouldn't, mm, that would have to be in an online lesson because... That would require several several layers, and that just wouldn't fly uh, with the uh, the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube we can call it the YouTube gods. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't fly with that, unfortunately. Never say never, though. Maybe, maybe at some point, if it becomes suitable to the analytics, we can explore that. But anytime I create a painting with more than two uploads, uh, the YouTube odds don't favor me anymore. And if the YouTube odds don't favor me anymore, I'm in some trouble. So this is also your behind the scenes into what YouTubers think about. Because we have to think about the YouTube odds. It's literally bread and butter. You have to think of these things. And it's funny, they just updated the YouTube uh, algorithms and I noticed the math. It looks it, To me, it looks like a Fourier, Fourier transform on the graph to anyone that's taken differential equations because it's calculating your analytics in real time. And I noticed it's a Fourier transform because of the... Uh, not just the graph, the graphs that they use, but the constant change with respect to time. It's interesting to, to notice the calculus behind the YouTube analytics. Hmm, let's see. Um, let's see, what have I missed? Hey, Julie, Diana, one. Would you say oil paints are a harder medium to learn? I don't think so. I think oil paints are probably one of the most beginner-friendly because they they don't dry right away. Certain mediums or materials will dry in a matter of minutes, sometimes seconds, and then you really can't do anything other than paint over it more opaque to fix it. Uh, so I think oil paints are actually a little more beginner friendly, but that depends on who you ask, really. But in my opinion, they're a little easier. Hey, David Lawrence, I had two Chilean rose tarantulas. I got bitten many times. They would eat me instead of the crickets. Oh no, 
I, I was bitten by a, a Vicularia Vicularia, the, the pink toe, but I didn't get envenomated, so I, it wasn't that bad. Uh, but my, I have a Chilean rose hair too. Uh, my Chilean rose hair is like almost as big as my hand. And she's, she's a, she's a sweetheart. She's so nice. But I, I don't usually take them out. Um, just because they, they don't like to be taken out. Um, but awesome. Uh, thank you for uh, relating with me there, David. It's kind of hard, David, as you, uh, as I'm sure you know, <laughs> for, uh, tarantula people to relate to the rest of the world. Hey, Shia, uh, someone in my class has asked the same question about painting uh, persons of your um, similar appearances. The professor stopped the class in the middle uh, and made us all listen. Uh, an artist paints a subject. It is it is shapes, not... Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think of it as shapes almost all the time. You know, I never think of it as the, the, the thing like I never think of it as a rooster when I'm painting a person I never think of it as a person or think of them as a person that sounds weird I need to reword that when I'm painting a human being I disassociate from the fact that I'm painting an image of a human being but rather I'm telling myself I'm painting shapes that will represent that which I'm observing in nature that's what I usually tell myself um Hey, Joanne, I have a long-haired cat on my easel. Ooh, it took uh, so many tips uh, from your cat live... Oh, I took so many tips from your cat live stream. Oh, thank you. Uh, especially using or pushing the color of the light on the ears. Thanks so much for sharing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joanne. I'm glad that that one helped you out. Thank you. Hey, Barhawaj. Um... What is the safest and cheapest way to ship a 20 by 30 sized canvas? Anytime you're shipping a canvas, you kind of have to create a custom box. So for instance, um, you're in luck. If it's a canvas with stretchers, what I would suggest is create a custom box that uses the supports of the frames themselves, uh, the, uh, the sorry, the stretchers themselves. So the support is sandwiched with the wooden box and make sure to have something on top of the wooden box so that nothing flattens it. What I do actually when I ship out paintings, uh, whenever I make a sale, uh, what I do is actually I frame it. So I give them, I give my, uh, the people that buy the paintings a uh, bonus frame and um, I frame the panel. So if I were to sell this, I would frame it. I would put a, um, a frame and sandwich the frame with solid material so that it wouldn't harm the painting. That's what I would do. But um, you would have to build a custom box for a 24 by 30. Hey Shaya, uh, we should never limit ourselves to only paint one type of anything because we don't grow as an artist if we limit ourselves. Quote of the day goes to Shia. Awesome. Um, I'll read it again. We should never limit ourselves only to one type of... Uh, okay. I'm trying to read from my YouTube screen, but it's it, I, it's kind of hard to point at it and read. So, quote of the day. We should never limit ourselves to only one type of anything because we don't grow as an artist if we limit ourselves. Awesome. Uh, deep and philosophical quote. Philosophical quote, Shia. Um... Hey, David. Uh, oh, I'm sorry if I skipped your comment. Uh, feel free to type your comment again. The last one I got from you, David, was the two Chilean tarantulas, of which I mentioned. Uh, I have one Chilean that's uh, almost as big as my hand. She's very friendly, and I've only been bitten once by uh, uh, Vicularia, Vicularia, the pink toe. But it wasn't a venomous bite, so I was fine. So I'm sorry, David, if I skipped a previous comment, but I don't see any other comments. Uh, hey, Hardjot, am I adding the second chicken? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to add the second one. It just doesn't make sense with the composition. What I might do eventually is put a shadow here. It might make more sense with the composition. Hey, Julia Diana, one. Uh, oh, okay, so you're spying the Shia. 
Uh, hey, Sky, I don't have an easel because I'm cheap. Instead, I use a laptop holder. You know, I didn't... When I just started, I didn't have an easel either. I would just use the, the clothing, uh, clothing hamper or whatever it's called. I would just lean it on a wall. Hey, Julie, Diana, one. Uh, okay, so charity shops. Oh, awesome. All right, so I apologize to anyone. Um, if I if I missed your comment, it's not intentional. It's just I'm trying to read quickly. And my eyesight's not that great. So I'm just using a 13-inch MacBook Pro. So I'm trying to read the comments as quickly as I can. Hey, Julia, I see. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's paint a little shadow down here. What we're doing is we're we're moving that, that rooster or chicken or whatever it is, and we're putting it shadow instead. Because I think it makes more sense with the composition. And then we'll add some texture for the grass. <laughs> Hard job, you miss. Oh, hey, Joanne. Oh, thank you so much for your support on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much, Joanne. Uh, shout out with the paintbrush to Joanne. Thank you so much for your support on my. Um, thank you for your support on my live stream. It helps out so much. Thank you, uh, Joanne. And thank you for um, noticing that I'm trying to answer all the questions. I'm trying to read quickly. Is there a... Uh, yeah, I, I kind of am always having fun when I'm using my favorite brush. In particular, when you're mixing color with the Egbert, with this really long... Uh, long brush, long uh, bristled brush. I don't know. It's just a, it's a fun activity. And thank you for all the super chats today, everyone. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sky, can I use the same brushes for water mixables and traditional? Yep, Sky, definitely. When I use traditional, I, uh, or sorry, when I use water mixable, I use the same brushes too. What you want to do, though, is make sure that you don't have any of the traditional medium with your, uh, off with your leg. I just want to get the edge. Don't worry, I'll add the rooster's leg back. I oftentimes have to make sure that I don't have any any medium left on my uh, uh, on my brushes, any traditional medium, because you, you can add traditional over top of water mixable, but not vice versa. Hard job, uh, if you're listening, uh, and everyone else that may get this reference. One of these days, we're going to make a rooster go Super Saiyan, because you can see, you can imagine the, the gold hair <laughs> uh, and the, the rooster powering up. Can you imagine? Maybe for April Fool's. <laughs> that would be so much fun to paint. Roosters are such majestic creatures. They appear to be, at least. Don't worry, I'll add I'll add the legs back, don't worry. 
Sometimes you need to cover over <laughs> the surface to get it uh, the full coverage, that is. All right, no worries. I'm going to add the legs back. And also, thanks to everyone that's leaving a like in the stream. We are at, uh, where, where are we? We have 69 likes, so thank you everyone that's leaving a like. And again, especially uh, thank you to um, the two of you that have helped me out with the super chat. Uh, hey, Arjot. Uh, no, I don't think I'll add the second chicken. But I added a shadow here. Uh-oh, are the comments lagging? I'm a little afraid that the comments are lagging. Hey, Muhammad. Uh, sup, you probably tell us what the best art movie or series you suggest I... I go with uh, Da Vinci Demons. Hmm. Uh, art movie. You know what my favorite art movie is? It's on YouTube. I'm going to type it out for everyone. This is my favorite uh, kind of like go-to art movie. Especially because I miss all, you know, miss painting uh, in art studio settings. It's called The Impressionists. Uh, so this is my favorite movie series, art movie series on, on YouTube. Hey, Marty. Uh, <laughs> yes, and give the rooster a blue dress <laughs> and white shoes like Vegeta. <laughs> I just want to see a Super Saiyan rooster. I'm going to Google that after I'm done with this. Um, hey, Omar. Are you going to desaturate the greens? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the greens are very bright, so I'm definitely going to bring down the saturation soon. Uh, hey, Harjot, did you add something spooky? Uh, are you adding something spooky like you did before? I can. Any suggestions on something spooky I can add in the background? I could add Slenderman. Has anyone seen Slenderman? <laughs> uh, then this painting will definitely not sell <laughs> if I put Slenderman in the woods. And I still have cat hair, or not cat hair, uh, chihuahua hair. Uh, my chihuahua taco, or the family chihuahua taco was with me during my um, my uh, Patreon live chat on Sunday. <laughs> hey, Harjo, why don't you add uh, Luffy's hat on the rooster? That might ruin the composition if I did. Not the movie? Wait, what? Oh, The Impressionist. Now, The Impressionist is a, a movie featuring, like, Monet. Monet, well, obviously actors um, acting out, um, you know... Uh, Monet, Cezanne, Manet, Renoir, when they were in their youth, um, you know, just just beginning. I don't know. I just showed like the camaraderie between artists, and I I really liked it. I don't think it's very historically accurate, but I don't know. I liked it as a movie featuring um, art, anything art related. Hey, Zara. Yeah, Taco was making continuous grunting noises, and he sounded like an alien creature. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a interesting chihuahua. Uh, hey, Sky, what's your opinion on painting on a sketchbook? I think we're referring to the Cesar Santos. <laughs> when you're painting on a sketchbook, that's um, you're kind of creating an, a, like a, a whole different type of. I guess collage. It's like a collage of paintings, I think. Uh, 
Hey, John M. McAnally. Hello. All right, I got to desaturate the greenish tones. Uh, they're a little too bright, and I need to add a little more depth into the trees back there, so let's do that. I'm moving a little faster than usual, I think. I'm going to clean off the brush a little bit, not completely, but a uh, little with the Gamsol. I have black. I'm actually going to use a Lizarin now to kill off some of the saturation. Let's see. Hey, Zara. Lena, Lena, Donna, Lena Donna paints in a moleskin sketchbook weekly also. Uh, is that an Instagram? Dan Dania? Is that an Instagram? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that sounds cool. Unless she's a YouTuber. I don't know. I mean, if it's an art YouTube channel, I, I don't watch too many art YouTube channels. I tend to look, I tend to watch uh, uh, reptile-related YouTube channels. Now I'm going to add a little more depth, as you're noticing there, to the background. And then I'll get to the foreground. Grass definitely has planes. So we're going to have to add all of those intricate little planes. Hey, Ingrid. Uh, how do we help you on YouTube? Well, just by typing comments, really, Ingrid, you're already helping me because it helps to bring... Uh, it, it tells the analytics... When viewers are commenting on a creator's live stream, not just me, but if you're watching other other uh, YouTubers' live streams, the more you comment, um, obviously commenting things that won't get us in trouble, uh, the more you comment, the more the algorithm says, hey, this person's doing something that uh, people are interested in, and then it gives us preference. Um, so that already helps, Ingrid. Yeah, honestly, if you if you would like to to support the channel, uh, you're already doing it by uh, writing comments. Um, also, there are the uh, super chats, the donations that 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 you can make, and there's also, of course, the online classes on Patreon. But thank you for that question, Ingrid. Hey, Marty. Uh, can you sell this painting to some chicken fast food restaurant? <laughs> Maybe, I guess. Hey, Zara. Oh, okay, uh, she has a YouTube channel. Um, who are we referring? Are we referring to Lena Danya. Okay. Awesome. Yep, that's a YouTube channel I definitely uh, should check out. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, hey Sky, uh, I know who she is, but her videos aren't that helpful. Uh, they're all sped up. You can't really call them. Uh, well, sometimes, I mean, the sped up videos can help as well, but I, I know what you mean. Now we're adding more depth to the trees. Let's see. Oh, thanks for the emoji thumbs up, Onaria. And uh, thanks for all the emojis and the rooster emojis. Hey, Harjot. Uh, and Defo sharing by word of mouth. Oh, yeah, sharing by word of mouth definitely is another way to help out creators. Uh, 
<laughs> so, hey, Harjot. So we hit 80, 80 likes and we can add Slenderman. I'm thinking about it. I feel like I can add something at least back here. It feels like something can be added here in this little misty, misty area. Hey, Sky. Yeah, I think sketchbooks are great because I, c I can't afford to paint every study on canvas. Yep, I got you. It can be very expensive. And you know what I do? Um, I go to Jerry's Artorama and I look for their super sales. Um, and again, Jerry, Jerry's Artorama is mainly in the U.S., but I look for the super sales. And what I have is a huge roll of not so high quality cotton canvas. Um, and what I do is I actually will, if I'm going to make a painting out of it, I'll gesso it a lot uh, with the Liquitex Professional. But if I'm doing a sketch, I'll, I'll gladly just use a sheet of the, uh, the cotton canvas and just paint right onto it. And that ends up saving you a lot of money if you don't stretch it. All right, so now some more planes. Planes, planes, and planes for the greenery. In particular, the chroma is going to have to get more blue over here. So we can add now different planes. So when you're painting grass, think about it. Grass is like individual blades of grass. So it's never going to be one flat uh, flat thing, right? It's not going to be like a tarp or a repti carpet, for those of you that may know what that is, uh, if you work with reptiles. Uh, it's never going to be a flat thing. Grass is going to have all kinds of interesting uh, shapes and spots. So you can basically just take whatever from your palette and add all kinds of texture for the grass. Let's see. Hey, John M. McAnally. Uh, McAl McAlany. Uh, siren head would be a nice Halloween subject. <laughs> yeah, kind of very spooky, but yeah. Yeah, how about that? Let's do something different with our, uh, with the, uh, the chat. How about this? Oh, wait, hold on. Omer, uh, these days, the common point of the painters on YouTube is photorealistic paintings. People like watching and learning how to paint type of realism, even though it's not their taste. Well, kind of, yeah. Uh, YouTube is kind of a push and pull, really. Um, I think that, I don't know, um, I feel fortunate. Like, I feel very lucky to have the... Uh, the, the the viewers, uh, to have all of you here. Um, I feel very fortunate to have uh, the kind of following that I have here on YouTube. I'm not, not a big time YouTuber by any means. I'm not a big time artist at all. Um, I'm just me. I, I'm lucky if I sell a painting in uh, a month. Uh, you know, I'm not a big time painter, but for the most part, I mean, there's there are trends here on YouTube that that sell more and, and I'm not really into the trendy stuff which is probably why <laughs> I'm not that popular but I, I get what you mean about the hyper hyper realistic stuff what I don't like too much is predictable subject matter because I don't know some some things have been painted over and over and over again and it, it can be kind of boring to see the same kind of thing painted over and over again I want to introduce something different to the mix and create a different art form that combines video and painting in such a way that everyone may benefit. And I think, like I've said before, these live streams are the evolution, really, of what I've been trying to do with YouTube for the longest time. Uh, let's see. Hey, Zara, I love realistic and hyper-realistic and painterly. 
Oh yeah, it's all you know everything at at, at its own at its own pace. Hey Harja, I think hyper realistic is is over. I mean, if you're looking at super like if you look at a Jeremy Lipking, like that's super realistic, but you know it's got that nice kind of I don't know hand painted aspect to it. Hey Harja, yeah, Monet paintings are awesome. I love Monet paintings um, for their simplicity and composition. A lot of times, uh, Monet's, the reason they make the Monet <laughs> is sometimes the composition. Hey, Hardjot. Oh, hey, we hit 80 likes. I don't know about I I got to think about it. I do think that something has to fit there, but we didn't quite discuss it yet. Uh what to put in the background. Hey Joanne, Halloween would be a great time to do a nocturne. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So everyone, uh crowd question. I'm not going to respond because I don't know the answer, my answer. But crowd question, what Halloween themed uh paintings do you want me to do? Harja, I already know the headless horseman, but you go ahead and type it again. Uh, because I want to do th that one as well. Uh, let's see, let's see. Hey, Marty, I like traditional art more than hyper-realistic. Correct use of light and dark is important, I think. You don't need too much detail. Correct, I believe that as well. Hey, Omer, to sell more, you need to act less as a teacher and more like an edgy artist. Uh, don't get me wrong. I like your style and lear learned a lot, of course. Now, now for me, I want to make my living off of my online classes for the most part. I want to grow my online classes into more of a, uh, you know, a learning-based community. Um, that, I think, will be my bread and butter in the future more than sales. Um, but I do want to combine my online classes with this experience and of course, I want to make the streaming experience more and more fun for everyone. Once I get the, the moolah to have a dedicated streaming uh, PC, then I can have enough CPU to have two cameras so you can actually see me. Maybe we can, like, I don't know, dress up for Halloween or something. I don't know. It'll be more fun with a second camera. But for most, for the most part, I want to make my living from helping others, teaching others more than selling paintings. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sky. Uh, you probably have you ever tried watercolors? Question mark. I don't know why, but they scare me. They kind of scare me too. And no, uh, I haven't tried watercolors. I think that's why they scare me. Uh, hey, Harjot, what do you think about Andrew Trisher? Oh, I've, I've checked out his channel since uh, someone actually mentioned it on this stream. Um, and I did check out his channel. He's great. Um, I really like the tips, the art tips that he gives. He's definitely more of a, a, a marketing geared YouTube artist, I think. Uh, you know, he uses those titles in his videos that attract more viewers. I more, more along the lines, title my videos, whatever comes to mind. Um, so, but his videos, he's great. His artwork is great. In particular, I like his landscapes. Hey, Zara. Impressionist soft pastels are awesome, too. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Harjo. Yep, the Headless Horseman, definitely. And Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And Jason. Yeah. I gotta find the copyright free images for that.
And again, for anyone that really enjoys um, the content on the YouTube channel, uh, please check out the online classes again, if you don't mind, for $10 a month. And also, if you have any questions about the online classes, feel free to ask me. I definitely don't mind talking about that. Hey, uh, Marty. Oh, that's a good idea. Still life with a skull. Yeah. That's a great idea. Although, I have to... I'll probably use uh, one of those plastic ones that you find in, like, Target or something, as opposed to, like... Uh, a more realistic skull. I feel like I might get in trouble if I use a realistic skull. Hey, Zara. Yeah, Andrew uh, Tischer is great. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the painting of the rooster. Oh, yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah. some. I think also a lot of... Uh, we had a lot of suggestions for the rooster last time. Um... So Astro Beta Cyrus, you mentioned it. Dondo also mentioned it. Um, I think we had a lot of suggestions for the rooster. And now, hopefully, this is tacked up a little bit. And now I'll go in with the feathers. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'd love to have you painting along with me. Hey, John, um, a cracking fire with a cauldron would be a nice neutral Halloween subject. I'm going to screenshot that. I like that idea. All right, shift command four for a screenshot. Yeah, I'm going to take a screenshot of that. I learned that screenshots are more efficient than trying to write things down. More medium to get the paint to flow. Now, of course, our rooster is more fluffy, uh, kind of more, more, more puffed up. <laughs> he kind of looks like he's gonna attack the the other rooster that's in the off the scene here. Oh, too light, wrong value. Uh, let's see, hey Omer, uh, a skull next to a smashed pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, that could work. Hey Julie Diana one, a skull with a tarantula and flowers. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I can get one of the, one of those. Uh, Actually, you know what? I was thinking of putting some skulls for decoration in my tarantula enclosures. So I can do that. I just know that um, the top two phobias that humans have are my top two favorite animals. Isn't that crazy? The top two phobias in the world are uh, phobia to snakes and phobia to spiders. Uh, unfortunately, so uh, that would definitely scare some viewers. But see, the more we understand something, the less we will fear it. So that's why I really enjoy watching um, reptile and uh, tarantula uh, YouTube channels because I learned I learn more. But that's a great idea with the skull, the tarantula, and the flowers. Hey, Sky, any tips on how to see colors? For example, skin tones. I use a color picker app, but want to stop relying on it. Sky, so what I usually tell my students is to relate colors to one another and let that be your gauge. So, for instance, you know, I was actually earlier today, I was relating the red here and how it was too similar to the red here. 
So you want to relate uh, all of the dimensions of the Mun cell. So you want to relate hue, value, chroma uh, between individual shapes. And I don't believe in ugly colors. I don't think there's such a thing as an ugly color or a muddy color. It's just sometimes they're not related properly. Hey, uh, Jeff and Jeff Reed. Oh, thank you. Hey, Sky. What fascinates me is artists who can paint a portrait in color by looking at a black and white uh, reference. That's possible, yeah. I mean, you just... As long as you have the values there, you can easily kind of glaze onto it, really. Um, you know, paint it in monochrome and then glaze it. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus, I joined Patreon yesterday. Awesome. Uh, no worries. I uh, The message that I sent you was the care package. The Not the care. Why do I keep saying care package like I'm in college? <laughs> the um, welcoming package, which has all of the links to the playlists for each uh, project. And it also has the link uh, to the updated materials video. So I send that to every new, every new student. The the welcoming package. Let's see. What have I missed? What have I missed? Apologies if I missed any comments. Hey Ingrid, uh, what brand of water uh, soluble oils do you recommend? Cobra. I recommend Cobra Talons. I'll write it here. I'm probably going to misspell something, but I definitely won't misspell Cobra. So Cobra Talons uh, dash water mixable oil paints. Those are the ones I recommend. Just know that any water mixable oil paints will take a long time to dry in comparison to traditional oil paints. That's the only real like uh, uh, negative to it. But that can also be a positive if you use it for Alaprima. You can work on a painting for two days straight without having it dry with Cobra. Hey, Julia, I'm painting a Van Gogh starry night while watching you. Oh, awesome. It's very inspiring and motivating. Thank you. There is something I always wanted to paint, uh, or this is something I always wanted to paint since I was a child. Well, that's a great one to choose. That's a wonderful one to choose. Awesome. Hey, Duran, uh, Yupari Kama, would you please explain when and why you use medium? Certainly. Great time to ask that question. I'm about to use it. So I used a medium to thin out the paint instead of relying too heavily on the uh, thinner, the uh, solvent that is. Um, and I thin it out, see here, see how it sticks like pretty much almost as if this was um, dry. Uh, let me give you an example actually. So this brush doesn't have any, um, any um, medium on it, right? So I'll show you the difference. Flake white, titanium white, raw umber and I'm going to mix a color that's very similar now just just pay it, uh, close attention here this brush has no medium on it this brush has no medium in the mixture and it's about the same value almost there we go now it's about the same value okay so this one is about the same value but no medium this one is the same value but it has medium so this is the one with medium. This is the one without medium. With the same amount of pressure. See that? So you want to use medium when you're painting an ala prima to thin out the paint because as you saw there, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. That's when I switch gears and use medium. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you for answering, or for answer really. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question because I had the ability to show it in action there. In hindsight, this actually works better <laughs> for what I'm trying to do. All right, so let's see. Hey, John, I'm, uh, I'm from South Carolina, USA. Where is everyone from? That's a good question. 
I'm over here in Beltsville, Maryland. Hi, Anthony. Uh, do you ever paint the... Did you ever paint the Whistler's mother? I don't think I have. I can look into that. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus. Oh, I'm glad you find the, the welcoming package uh, to be helpful. And uh, what I do, everyone, is I organize the lessons based on the projects that they are associated with and create playlists that only my online students can see. Hey Ingrid, oh wow, born in Manchester, Connecticut. I was born in Rockville, Maryland. I'm still here in Maryland. Holbein water soluble oils are too thick, Ingrid. Um, yeah, I used Holbein before. I didn't quite like them. Uh, my favorite is the Cobra for sure. Now, Cobra Talons, the nice thing about Cobra Talons is that it it doesn't have that uh, gooey feeling that you get from a lot of other brands, other manufacturers that create water mixable oil paints. In particular, I think my least favorite of them all is the Winsor Newton Artisan. But if you have those and you're using them, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, they work. They just um, they uh, they have a little bit too much of a, a gooey texture to them, but they work. Hey, Sky, is it that bad to paint from a a reference on your phone? I don't think so. Um, as long as you have your phone connected on a power source, of course. And uh, no, I don't think so. I've done that before. I'm using an iPad. So at the moment, I'm using an iPad. It's it's just off screen to the left. Uh, hey, Joanne, as much as I would love to stay and see the rest, it's late here in Scotland. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You're, thanks for watching from Scotland. Uh, wish you a good night. Thank you so much for watching, Joanne. And... Uh, Based on technology and analytics, we should be here, again, similar time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. With a few, uh, we may have a few surprise streams once in a while. Hey, Hardjot, am I adding something spooky? Uh, no one really mentioned it. I mean, I, I thought of, to add Slenderman here is hard job, but I don't know. Um, let's see. All right, we made it to... Oh, Ingrid, I missed a comment. How often do you do live stream on YouTube? Um, I do live streams on YouTube typically three times a week, Monday uh, Wednesday and Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Ingrid. Sorry I missed that comment. So, hard job. Um, yeah, no, no one really suggested something to add, but I do feel like we can add something to this composition. We always add something. So, hard job. Uh, we thought about adding Slender Man back here. What does everyone think? What, what should we add to this painting once we reach, uh, uh, the stream is the stream isn't that popular, so I'm not gonna ask for too many likes. So, um, how about it? Just type your suggestions. I want to put something in here. Here, I want to sneak something in here. So, what do you suggest? I I sneak in there. 
Uh, hey, Jeff, uh, Jeff Reed, you probably, how much tooth do you like for a portrait? Uh, do you prefer a very smooth surface? Yes, I do. But I like a little bit of tooth, a little bit of texture. So not super smooth, but just a little bit of texture. I'm sorry, it's kind of vague, but my favorite surface to paint on um, is the uh, Ampersand Gesso Board Museum Series. Hey, Julia Dino one do you use Unsplash for your reference photos? And if not, where do you... I use Unsplash. Yep, Unsplash. And Pexels sometimes. Uh, spelling. Oh, no worries, Zara. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask me anything. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus. Oh, wow. You're uh, watching from Japan. Awesome. Hey, Jeff Reed. Actually, we did a pumpkin... A pumpkin patch last time. Hey, hard job. Uh, but we can all, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Reed, we can also do another pumpkin later. Let's see. Put a zombie coming out of the ground. <laughs> that might be a little, a little too spooky. I was thinking of some, something off in the background there. Hey, Zara, if you were to restrict the painting to only the Zorn palette colors, how would you do the underpainting with ivory or a number... Honestly, with the Zorn palette, Zara, I would suggest just to use raw umber. Um, because if you use ivory black and if you mix a brown with the Zorn palette, you're going to have a slow drying underpainting. So I would just, even though you, uh, I suggest the Zorn palette, I would still always have raw umber because it dries faster. Hey, John, a grasshopper on a blade of grass. That could work. Hey, hard job. They shut down One Piece in Tokyo Tower. What? Oh, no. Hey, Marty. I would add some cabin like Bob Ross would do. A cabin? Oh, yeah. A distant cabin. Uh, <laughs> that could make sense. But we were, we were thinking more along the lines of something spooky. A bush with flowers. Astro Beta Cyrus. Hey, he, he, comma, it's me again. I really like your uh, username. Uh, oh, thank you for watching from Canada. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that the uh, streams are helping you out. And Jeffrey, yep, ivory black takes forever to dry. Unless you have the Alkid ivory black from Winsor Newton. Hey, Michael Saxon, a fox? Yeah, we could, maybe... Yeah, hard job. I would just use raw umber for an un underpainting. Raw umber and uh, flake white or titanium white. Hey, hard job. Yeah, cabin in the woods. Spooky chicken coop. Ooh, I like that. Foxes are spooky to chickens for sure. Oh, yeah, we did have a story about a fox and a chicken not that long ago. So maybe that's a little too real. But it, it is missing something. In particular, something over here. Hey, Karam, Salim. Um, which brushes do you recommend for oil painting? Hard bristles or soft synthetic? I use synthetics uh, for the most part. Um, acrylic or watercolor synthetics are usually what artists use. A caravan, yeah. Hey, Marty, a clown in the distance. I should have, like, a whole separate array of photo references at my disposal. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. A zombie coming out of the grave. Because this does look like a mist, a misty area. And you know what? I should probably put a little more definition. Uh, yeah, I will. Put a little more definition. I'll use a little bit of a cooler color. To differentiate this plane.
Now I have to be careful because one time I nearly ruined a painting here by uh, trying to put a face mask on a tree, so I have to be a little careful. Let's see. A hawk? Oh, that's that's like a bird. Oh, that makes like a bird flying. Hey, hard to. Oh, a hand coming out of the ground. A hand coming out of the mist. That's a good one. Oh yeah, we could have something coming out of the mist. Oh, what about an anaconda? Should I put an anaconda coming out of the mist here? And approaching the chicken. No, I'll get in trouble if I do that. Oh, add some tombstones to the... Oh, tombstones to the ground. That's a good one. Good idea, Marty. Tombstones coming out of the ground. Yeah. A zombie coming out of the tombstone. A hand coming out of the tombstone. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, the KFC side. Shane. <laughs> oh, my God. The vegans are going to kill us. Um, which, by the way, I was I was on a vegan diet for two years. So I understand the sentiments to anyone. <laughs> hey, Jeffrey. For Ala Prima, do you find it hard to put in hard edges? I tend to get soft edges no matter what. Um, with hard edges, you can usually uh, you can get them by more force, uh, putting more force down for the brush stroke and having thinner paint. So I'll show you. So a little bit thinner, right? And I'll show you. Uh, so suppose I want to sharpen this edge, right? So what you want is more pressure and thinner paint. See that? And we can get sharp edges that way with Ala Prima. I like it. I think I'm going to stick with the tombstone. We're going to put a tombstone. Hey, Astro Beta size flowers with colors that could complement the colorful rooster. I don't know. I kind of like the hand coming out of the ground. Maybe the hand carrying... Holding some flowers. Hey, Hardjot, you're about to go watch One Piece. Awesome. Which arc are you on? Or are you all caught up with the series? <laughs> we could put the zombie hand coming out. All right, let me first put in the tomb. I feel like the tombstone should go here. I feel like that would make more sense. Now I have to gauge the shadow, though. Okay, so the shadow is coming from here, I believe. Yeah, so if there's cast shadows here, then we put a tombstone here, and there will be a cast shadow there. Hey, Karam. Oh, happy birthday to you. Today is your birthday. I'm going to give you a, a happy birthday shout out. Happy birthday to you, as we say here in the U.S. Happy birthday to you. Hey, Jeff Reed. Yeah, well, I'm glad you like the tip about the sharp edge because we're actually going to use that. We're going to put in a sharp edge. So tombstone begins now. So we're going to start to paint in the tombstone. Little tip with Ala Prima. It's actually easier to start with darker colors. And very thick paint. Oh, you're welcome, uh, Karen. Oh, you're on Fishman Island. Okay, I won't spoil anything. <laughs> the distant tombstone. It's so October. And the shadow for the tombstone. C 
see, all of you make this awesome. Um, and again, let's let's all wish um, Karim a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Karim. Uh, so everyone makes this awesome because I wouldn't have even thought of putting a tombstone here. But it makes sense. It makes sense. And we're going to put the hand reaching out of the soil soon. Let's see, what have I missed? Hey, hard job. Sanji's super annoying. Yeah. Oh, just wait. Oh, just wait for what Sanji's going to do in the future. Oh, yeah, hard job, by the way. My ball pythons, I have one named Luffy, another named uh, Zoro, and recently I got Nami. Now I just need to get Frankie, Brooke, Usopp, Chopper. I should have named my fiance's um, King Snake Chopper because he loves to bite me. Hey Muhammad, hello. Can you make a uh, make content about Renaissance painting techniques? Uh, Renaissance painting techniques. You mean uh, gl super classical with glazing? Actually, if you're interested in that and very classical, the Please check out the online classes. Again, they are $10 a month. They are, uh, uh, we use classic. Actually, let me show you. I hope I have it here still. Uh, I'm taking a risk because I don't know if the right image is here. Uh, okay, so you asked me about rem Renaissance painting, Mohammed. Now this isn't rem Renaissance. Ooh, let's hope it's still here. Oh, it's still there, goodness. Thank goodness. Again, that's a screenshot from one of my uh, previous uh, online lessons. This is a painting that's not complete yet, but that's a screenshot for um, one of the projects that we're working on, the pearl earring in the online classes. Hey, hard job. Oh yeah, it can get worse. Sanji can get worse. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff Reed, also for Alla Prima, when you are getting over a layer of paint, uh, do you want to go s with a softer brush and avoid cutting through the underpainting? Uh, yeah, well, I use so the same kind of consistency of soft brushes, but what really matters is the, the thinness of the paint. So for instance, see how I'm putting in a sharp edge? I need this to be very thin. And I'm going to put a lighter section above to put a highlight to the tomb tombstone. All right, who wants me to put 2020 on the tombstone? Because we want 2020 to be gone, don't we? How many likes till we put a 2020 on the tombstone? Okay, I'll tell you what. We're at 87 likes. If we make it to 100 likes, I'll put a 2020 in the tombstone. Because I feel like there needs to be a 2020 in the tombstone. Because we want 2020 out of here. Oh, thanks, uh, Jeff Reed. Hey, Muhammad. Oh, the online classes. Got it. Uh, yeah, please, uh, if you like the content, please check out my online classes. Remember, they're only $10 a month. Oh, no, no worries. Uh, you know, every single brushstroke of each painting project is captured on film, so no need to worry. And you can take the classes at your own pace. Hey, Julie, Diana. Well, I'm glad you liked... Yes, I want to put 2020 here because I want 2020 to be gone. So, please, if we make it to 100 likes... We're at 90 now. So, if we make it to 100 likes, I'll put 2020 in the tombstone because we want 2020 gone. <laughs> gone forever. How many of us thought 2020 was going to be like something? It, something else? I'm going to put a little bit of a bluish reflected light in the tombstone. Since it is outside, it should have a bluish reflected light.
And of course we want the hand sticking out of the grave. So we'll get to that. See how easy it is to paint a realistic, almost looking slab of concrete for a tombstone? With the Alla Prima technique. So now what I'm going to do is put a little bit of uh, dirt, like a dirt looking, like fresh dirt over here. And we're going to make it look like the hand is coming out of the dirt. A la Halloween. So it looks like a freshly dug grave. Kind of. I still have to blend a little bit. I did lose the shadow somewhat, so I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Yeah, let's let's try that again. I'm just trying to make it look like rough soil. And instead, it's just looking like a second shadow. You know what? I'm just going to move the shadow. Yeah, I'm going to put the shadow over top of the rough soil. So let's see, everyone still with us? Does everyone want to see the hand coming out of the soil? And again, if we make it to 100 likes, I will put 2020 on the, uh, <laughs> I'll put 2020 on the tombstone. Hey Nicholas, Fernandez, I'm glad this is so helpful for you. Uh, Ala Prima can be very fun. Oh, thanks, Marty. All right, let's do it. Let's let's paint the hand coming out of the soil. So first, we'll put a little hole in the soil where the hand is going to come from. And now the shadow side of the hand. Yep, hard job. We're painting the hand. Hey, uh, Christina. Let's see. From what I understand, I think it's uh, that since we have we have different languages, I think you're writing in Portuguese. Uh, 
that you don't under we don't understand each other, but you still like the uh, but you still like the stream. Thank you. I'm sorry about the language gap, but I'm glad you, you still like it. Oh yeah, no problem, uh, Julie Diana one again. Everyone, please send any comments you have, any questions you have. Don't feel like you're interrupting me. Whatever you do, don't feel like you're interrupting me. Oh yeah, the hand's gonna have a shadow, right? So now what I need is a skin tone for the hand. Oh, thank you. I wish I could read that comment. I apologize. Hey, Jeffrey. Yeah, uh, Alaprima can get a little overwhelming, but it you know it depends on what we want to get out of it. I have a specific look in mind whenever I do Alaprima, so I don't want it to be as realistic, say, as a you know, a classical painting. So I have a certain look in mind. All right, so just like that, we have a simple little skin tone that we will use for the hand. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus. Oh, I'm glad that that's your... Uh, your favorite technique. Oh, thank you, Christiana. Uh, Christiano, thank you. Hey, hard job. We're at 97 likes. So it looks like so three more likes, and we will put 2020 in the tombstone. But of course, I gotta paint the hand. So there's the knuckles of the hand. The palm. The arm. So what I'm what I'm aiming for is a thumbs up with this hand. So let me cover this. Hey Harjo, you should paint your. Uh, she's a little shy when it, uh, she's a little camera shy. So misty water in the background. Yep, misty water. So what I'm trying to do is paint a, a thumbs up. So where's the thumb? So I'm going to have to use my hand. It's going to look like a middle finger for a little while. I have to use my hand as a reference. So thumbs up. So there would be light on the back of the wrist. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is becoming a mess. I'm <laughs> painting the hand. It looks like some kind of squirrel is there. Oh, hey, Julie, Dan, and one. All right, we're at a hundred likes. Now we can put in the the 2020. All right, everyone, <laughs> rest in peace, 2020. We want to get rid of it. Here's to no more messed up stuff happening in 2020. First, I'll start with the dark. Oh, thanks, Arjat. You made three likes with your other accounts. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wow. Talk about uh, painting thinner onto thicker. I have to thin out the paint a little more. Ah, it's not sticking. Someone asked about the brushes before, and sometimes it can be the brushes that cause the difficulty. The brush may be too, uh, shoveling the paint too much, so let's see if this works. So there's 120. Ah, ah, I need more. Ah, it's not sticking. Twenty, twenty. One more zero. 
Ah, kind of. I'm going to go in with some highlights. All right, let me see what I've missed. What have I missed? What have I missed? Uh, hey, Ann Sterling, first time viewer. Oh, uh, shout out to you, Ann Sterling, though I think I may have... Ah, the comment just, just skipped. But shout out to you. Up oh, Somewhere up here, the comment has moved. Uh, welcome to the live stream, Ann Sterling. Uh, came in late wondering if thin over thick technique conflicts with fatoverlene. No, 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 it doesn't. Uh, fatoverlene has nothing to do with the thickness of the paint. It, it's the ratio of the paint to the oil. Um, oh, yeah, thanks, Jeff, Jeff Reed, for answering that for me. Oh, use my palette knife, hard job. Good idea. I might, I might actually use the rear end of the brush. Hey, Astro Vedasaurus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the hand sanitizer. <laughs> uh, Naima, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tessa. All right, back end of the brush. Ah, it's not working. Okay, all right, we're going to have to try this again. What I'm going to do is make the tomb a, a little bit uh, wider and thicker. 2020 is making itself so difficult. It doesn't even want its own tomb. That's how difficult it is. Let's use flake white because we, we need thick paint for this. I am not giving up on getting rid of 2020 or at least giving it a tombstone. All right, take two. And let's see, what have I not missed? Astro Beta Cyrus, I'm sitting here and you can't stop admiring the rooster. Oh, thank you. Oh, I already read that. I already read that. Uh... <laughs> hey, Joe, the mid middle figure would be more appreciated. <laughs> that would be hilarious. All right, let's do this. Come on, paint. Work with me. Work with me. Gamsol and Venetian medium. Come on, paints work. Ah, I'm about to put a sharpie on this. I just don't have a brush thin enough for this. You know what? Just for you, just for all of you, I'm getting a new brush. This is so important that it requires a new brush. Oh my goodness, yes. A thousand times yes, it's working. Oh, thank you. Get away, 2020. I'm painting your tombstone. You're done. Hasta la vista. Te fuiste. 2020. All right, that's close enough. I think we got 2020. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Let's see, uh, what have I missed? I like the great artist Travis Scott said, 2020, I see no, no vision. <laughs> nice hard shot. Awesome quote there, hard job. All right, it was very difficult to do it, but I had to take a new brush out just to paint 2020. 2020 is, is so difficult. Now we're gonna put the highlights. I apologize, it's so difficult to see. I don't know if I can just move this closer to you. 2020. <laughs> it gets blurry the closer I move it to the, to the uh, camera because the camera is set to focus at this 
distance. But goodbye 2020. Good riddance 2020. Hey, me, you, and I. Yeah, I did already increase the size of the slab. Do you want me to redo it? <laughs> I just put the light on the 2020. All right, all right, all right. I'll do it, I'll do it. And everyone, please send me a bunch of comments, especially if you want to help with the channel. Just, just send a bunch of comments so that we can get rid of 2020. Now this definitely needs to be a middle finger sticking out of the ground. <laughs> I don't even care if I get demonetized for that. <laughs> We're going to turn it into a middle finger. And then no one's going to want to buy my painting, but it's okay. All right. The slab now has an increased size. Yeah, here's the 21, right, hard draw. Hey, Marty, if you want, you can add uh, across to the top of the tombstone so it's clearer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Alrighty, let's do this. Come on, 2020. Oh, uh, you see that? Now you can see the 20. Yes, we're getting rid of 2020. Ta-da! <laughs> we got rid of 2020. We buried it. Should put a face mask on the ground too, but it's going to look like underwear. Yeah, I mean, there's some, uh, yeah, you can, we can look at 2020 in a positive way too. I mean, for one thing, we started the live streams in 2020. All right, does everyone like this 2020 even more? <laughs> hey, me, you, that, that, that rooster wants to peck you. <laughs> yeah, probably. Can someone think of the symbolism behind this, like 2020? And a slab of concrete. Oh no, I'm sorry, Marty. Oh, apologize for the loss of your beloved cat. Yeah. Any any loss of a beloved a loved one loved one is always bad. Uh, let's see, John Michael. The speck of white paint on the grass is increasing my anxiety. Oh, well, let me get rid of it. <laughs> sorry. I got rid of it for you, John. Hopefully you're still here with us. All right, let's see if I missed anything. I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, thanks, uh, Jeff Reed. I'm glad you liked this video. I'm looking forward to the next one. Cheers to you as well. All righty. So, yeah, we have now put the, the tombstone and uh, we've put a hand there. <laughs> The tombstone with the 2020 took me a long time to paint. Um, 
But we're still here. And we're still painting. Oh yeah, no problem, John. Alright, so the hand is going to be flicking off 2020. I don't care if I get demonetized. It needs to happen. So there's the middle finger. Uh, so this would be what? The right hand. So here's the thumb would be on the left side. It just looks like a miniature person. This is not going to look like a hand at all. It's too small to really look like a hand anyway. <laughs> what do I struggle with the most? Hands. And especially in a miniature size. Alright, I apologize everyone. I went on a mission to paint the 2020 tombstone. But it seems to be the trend now. We we tend to add something to each painting now. It's a group effort. At some point I have to return to the rooster. But first I'm going to add a little bit of grass, grassy areas here. Hey, Ann Sterling, your live is so much fun. I, I set my notification with Glad. I, oh, thank you. Thanks for watching the live streams. Hey, me, you, and I. Does Alla Prima mean one sitting and soft edges? Most of your work is done in more than one sitting. Uh, actually, n most of my work is done in many layers, especially for the online classes. Um, we work in, in layers. Alla Prima means wet on wet. Um, so it stands for a la primera, which means uh, at first. Um, yeah, it is wet on wet, usually one sitting paintings. But you can use an a la prima style and continue layering. That's also a possibility. All right, let's return to the rooster. Uh, now clearly the rooster has a little bit uh, more of an angry look because the rooster wants to uh, peck at me so I'll make the rooster more angry. Uh, so next crowd question everyone. Next crowd question. What should we name this painting? Now, I want to see some creative names for this one. Fun and creative. I like comical titles. So let's come up with something comical. And something appropriate. It has to be uh, rated G. Uh, hey, Astro Beta Cyrus, you can always say you painted a mean snake. <laughs> and, well... The snakes are usually not mean, they're just misunderstood. I mean, can you imagine not have any, having any way to protect yourself except for biting? I want to see a creative and comical title from everyone. I want to see 36 titles. We have 30, uh, uh, 34 of us now. Uh, so I want to see around 30 titles. Hey, David. Oh, you found the supplier of Flake White in the UK. Awesome. I think that would be very useful to a lot of people.
So any fun and creative titles? Anyone still with us? Okay, John, that, uh, you saw YouTube just held that one. Yeah, no, I don't think we can use that one, John. Yeah, YouTube automatically flagged that one. Hey, Marty, uh, roast her year, <laughs> roast her year 2020. That's hilarious. It was a roasting year in, in many regards. Well, everyone is getting uh, flagged by YouTube. So there's a certain four-letter word that you cannot write. And if you do write it, it may actually harm my stream. So please don't write it. <laughs> Foghorn leghorn, of course. Awesome. Uh, let's see, Ann Sterling, uh, Cluck, yes, yes, like uh, Cluck, a doodle doo, Cluck, twenty, yes, that's a good one, Ann Sterling. That's a. Fun <laughs> I'm gonna screenshot that. I may actually end up using that, but I like all of the titles. I'm gonna screenshot that one, Ann Sterling. The death of 2020. The chickens have the last laugh. <laughs> Oh my god, Michael Saxon. Michael Saxon, uh, shout out there with the paintbrushes. I'm going to have to take a screenshot of that one too. The death of 2020, the chickens have the last laugh. <laughs> that is so true. That is such an appropriate title. Thank you. And thank you for avoiding the four-letter word that gets me in trouble. Okay, let's see. Hmm, a few more blades of grass, and I think we're going to call it a finished painting. Call it what it is. Uh, hey, Charles, what kind of name is Yupari? Um, uh, my family's from Peru. Yupari is actually my last name. My first name is... Uh, I don't like my first name. I don't go by my first name. Anyone that calls me by my first name is usually insulting me. Um, uh, but, uh, Yupari is my last name. Go vegan. <laughs> That's a good title. Uh, yeah, me, you, and I. Yeah, go vegan. And again, I was on a plant-based diet for years, for two years. At one point in my life. Uh, the more I want to add the texture of the grass, the less I want to add the texture of the grass.
you know what, Hard Jot and everyone else that gets the the Dragon Ball Z uh, references, I'm going to look up a Super Saiyan rooster after the stream ends. I just want to see it. I want to see a Super Saiyan rooster. And maybe we'll paint that for April Fool's. Uh, so since uh, I guess nobody wants to type anything for the titles, does anyone have any suggestions for what you want to see next time? So any suggestions for the next painting video? And again, I'm going to base these videos off of the analytics, everyone. So if the analytics suggest that three times a week is not good anymore, then we're going to have to limit it. Or if the analytics suggests that it is, again, it's all based off of math. So I'm going to go ahead and reevaluate the math. And again, any kind of comments or sharing of the streams will help. But I will be reviewing the analytics of this. Uh, any subjects? <laughs> hey John M. McAnally, end of 2020, coming home to roast. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I get end of 2020, coming home, of, coming home to roast. <laughs> That's pretty funny. One thing I'm going to have is a lot of brushes to clean. All right, it's going to be time for a signature. Rooster 2, Revenge of the Rooster. <laughs> rooster 2, Revenge of the Rooster. <laughs> I can see that as a movie right there. I realize once I sign this, I may have painted my own tombstone, which might be kind of weird uh, <laughs> because I'm going to have to sign my name and put the year. Maybe I shouldn't sign this one. It might be an omen. I don't feel like dying. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to sign this one. I feel a little weird signing it with a tombstone in it. Oh, well, whatever. I don't, I'm not a superstitious person. I'm just going to sign it. Cows, black and white ones, or just one? <laughs> uh, cows, okay. So for a suggestion, cows? Mmm. Ooh, that sounds like a good idea. But it doesn't necessarily have to be animal related as well. The only thing I can't really do is a, a classical style portrait because it will take multiple streams. And that will lose me viewers for sure. Uh, hey, Anster, wild mustangs. I guess headless horsemen would be... Uh, will be on the horse though omen spelled backwards is nemo <laughs> awesome i didn't know that i thought it would be an omen if i signed the painting with a with a tombstone in it but whatever i'm just gonna sign it
A hot air balloon? That's a good one. John? Yeah, yeah. A hot air balloon uh, cropped in the sky. Yeah, that, that sounds good. And so again, if you really, yeah, now I'm going to put another 2020. Spooky. Okay, now it's signed. Can I paint something surreal? Hmm. I don't. I don't know. I haven't really painted a surrealist image. I mean, this is kind of surreal already, but I'd have to think about that one. So I'm just gonna be cleaning off my brushes uh, and taking any questions now. I think the tombstone made us lose a good number of uh, of the audience, but it's all right. Uh, again, feel free to type in any suggestions for the next one. And again, the rooster was actually a suggestion. And remember, please check out my online classes. Uh, I'm going to have to do a portrait one of these days, just so everyone knows I can still do portraits. Um, yeah, so just any titles. Or any um, titles and possible future uh, paintings for our painting sessions. And I'm just going to be cleaning off some brushes and waiting for any uh, suggestions. So yeah, John, I can look for some kind of surrealist thing, but I guess my thing is usually, um, you know, th th this type of style, like Alla Prima Expressive. Hey, Jerry Robertson, this is great. It makes me chuckle. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm glad. It brings some kind of positivity. Hey, Nia, could you paint a person standing in front of a mirror? Possible. Possible. I can look into that. Hey, Ann Sterling, black dogs like, like Scotty. I'm struggling with fur. Yeah. Or a border collie. I can look look into those oh uh, hey Ingrid that's what I'm wondering what I should paint on Saturday I'm asking everyone for ideas candlelit still life would be nice that's a good one uh, John and Marty likes the hot air balloon <laughs> gone and I hope forgotten that's a good title right there for this one uh, Charles, yep. Gone and I hope forgotten for 2020. I guess, we, I don't think we'll ever really forget 2020, but gone for sure soon. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus, a wild cat. Awesome. Yeah, we definitely have our fair share of um, feral cats in the area. I'm just cleaning off these brushes. I tend to clean off the brush these all at once with the gamsol. That's the noise you're probably hearing. Ingrid, uh, a nice tropical ocean seascape. Yeah, we had a lot of ocean suggestions. Ocean seascape. So we can look into that as well but also a lot of Halloween themed stuff too and of course I'm cleaning these brushes together I will tell you though Gamsol is not that great 
for cleaning brushes. If you're used to using distilled turpentine, Gamsol feels really weak as a cleaning uh, tool. Coffee shops or cityscapes? Uh, Karam, yeah. Uh, excuse me, yeah, definitely. Uh, if I do, or when I do uh, something architectural, uh, like cityscapes or coffee shops, I will probably have to use a transfer uh, image, a transfer drawing, which I won't do as a live stream because everyone would fall asleep with a transfer drawing. But I do do those for my online classes because those are, of course, uh, meant to be instructional. Yeah, it's it's like the Gamsol really doesn't clean the brushes that well. Uh, hey Ingrid, yep, you can just use soap and water for the water soluble oil paints. Hey Karam, a transfer drawing is a drawing of uh, the basic block in, which means that using st simple straight lines and angles to get the correct proportions and linear perspective for a classical painting. Um, so that's what a transfer drawing means, and that's actually the process that I use um, for my online classes, for my online students. Um, sometimes we will go directly with paint, but for the most part I usually have um, transfer drawings that they do actually using their drawing templates that I create for them. Hey Tom Holland, uh, title. Wake me up when it's all over. <laughs> yes, screenshot, screenshot. Or actually, I'm just gonna write it down. I'm just gonna write it down. Wake me up when it's all over. I like it, I like it. I like it. I've written it down. Hey, Ingrid, um, I am not a good... Uh, oh, well, for drawing, of course, with my online classes, we do... For instance, this doesn't look good, so don't judge me off of this. At least try not to. This was a demonstration drawing from this morning. I'm not going to use this, but this was a um, demonstration drawing for my online students using a uh, drawing template. Um, so do you use a transfer, do you use transfer paper for that process, uh, Karam? Yes, I do. Um, I have the transfer paper materials, um, in, uh, my, uh, students' projects, in particular with the project number two, I have the transfer paper, um, suggested for them to purchase to transfer their drawings. And transfer drawings I highly suggest, especially if you're new to portraits, or if you're new to drawing and painting in particular, I highly recommend doing transfer drawings over this approach. This is like Fast and Furious, um, the Fast and Furious way of painting. It's not the easiest one to learn. It's not the easiest one to do. Um, but once you have a handle on classical painting, that gives you the, the ability to paint like this. <laughs> hey Charles, rooster disgusted with the year. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shaking the setup a little bit. My paper towel and my solvent is actually attached to the thing that's holding this together. All right, one more brush to clean and then I'm done. So any last questions? Huh. 
A rooster crossed the road and didn't make it. <laughs> nice one. One one page of self care. <laughs> That's messed up. The rooster that the rooster crossed the road and didn't make it. I don't know if anyone noticed the middle finger sticking out the the uh, the hand sticking out of the grave with the middle finger. Not very realistic, but I guess that makes sense to not make it realistic. Hey Marty, uh, are you can paint me next? I have photo dressed as a as a monk holding books and candles. Uh, interesting. I actually have painted a setup similar to that. Wake me up when you are uh, on the air. Or wake me up when you are on the air. What? Wait, I'm trying to figure that one out. On the air. In the air. I'm trying to figure that one out. Oh, the bird. <laughs> when the bird flies, I guess. I'm confused. Oh, okay. Wake me up when you are alive. Okay, that makes sense. Awesome. Well, thanks for that. That's a very specific title right there. That that goes with the whole live streaming setup theme. Nice one, Ingrid. Thank you. Awesome. And again, anyone that likes the uh, content on the YouTube channel, and uh, in particular the portrait paintings from the past and the future ones that we will make. Um, please check out my online classes. Again, I'll type the link for you. And they're only $10 a month. Just go to um, Patreon. Whoops, I misspelled my name. Please go to patreon.com slash artist Again, if you really like the content that you're seeing here and you want to take your learning further with me and at the same time uh, really help me out, please check out right there, patreon.com slash artist And uh, for the online classes, simply select the uh, mentor slash online class tier. You can also select for the $20 a month uh, tier, which is the live stream tier which grants you the ability to watch the lessons as they are created live before they are uploaded uh, for all of the students to see. Uh, and thanks again, Paul, uh, Paula, for watching. Um, I could do a portrait next. It's been a while since I've done a portrait here. Um, I think at this point I should be able to handle the criticism I'll get because portraits take a long time to get, um, you know, to to look like a human being. Hey, Karam, your ability to deal with questions and comments is great. Appreciate that. Oh, thank you. I mean, um, I really enjoy being able to interact and c communicate with everyone. That That's really what makes these streams so special, that we could be communicating in a matter of sometimes minutes um, across the world. And that, to me, is such a wonderful and powerful thing to be able to do. Um, and especially with painting, taking painting into a whole nother dimension with these live streams is, is really what I'm after. Hey, Astro Beta Cyrus, question. Have you ever used the Art Rage oil painting app? No, I actually don't think I've ever heard of it. Um, I haven't really explored too much of the uh, art apps. I use one app for my virtual classroom called Drawing Desk. Uh, it's a free app that I use to help my students with their artwork in the weekly virtual classroom, but um, not, I haven't really tried Art Rage. Okay, now these brushes are ready for hot water and dish soap. I'm going to cover up my Gamsol container. So any last questions, everyone? 
And again, we'll very likely, uh, depending on the analytics, be back, analytics and technology, uh, be back um, Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Well, all right. Uh, hey, Julio. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy the uh, uh, the live streams. Um, oh, we got another question. Uh, what do you do with the leftover paint, uh, Ingrid? So, uh, I just leave it, uh, the paint that's here, uh, I will just leave. Uh, and I'll, uh, since I'll be painting, uh, again on Friday, uh, I will just leave this here. Uh, this, however, I will clean with a razor blade. Uh, uh thank you, Ingrid. I'm glad that you enjoyed the lesson. So I'm going to write my little comment here. Thanks everyone for watching. And again, one last little, uh, again, I'll ask you once, once more, please check out my online classes. If you would like to take your learning with me further again, thank you so much everyone for watching. Hey Marcelo, actually we're about to sign off buddy, but we will be back on Friday. Hopefully, we will be back on Friday, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Marcelo. Sound good? All right. All right, so thank you so much, everyone, for watching and for suggesting, of course, the extra stuff that we always put, uh, that we've been putting lately in the paintings. I wish you all... The very best in all of your artwork and again i truly do mean it when i say thank you so much for writing comments questions and everything uh in the live stream all of you sitting there even the ones that haven't sent any any comments or anything just i, I feel your presence and everyone here that's watching and interacting uh, and just here with us um, makes this such an awesome experience so thank you so much everyone uh, for all of your support and for, of course, watching the, the stream. Hey, Naima. Okay, portrait with jewelry. Yep, that's a good idea. Uh, again, thank you so much, everyone. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I will see you on the next one.